Barstool Sports Network is the official video and audio streaming partner of the WPIAL. We broadcast over 2,000 sporting events each year and cover 17 sports in over 170 schools. At HSSN, you'll find the latest in high school sports news, live and archived broadcasts, scores, standings, and much more. Trib Live High School Sports Network, your high school sports leader. All season, every. This is the Lawrence County Sportsman, powered by LCAP. Go, 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 your home for the county Stop of champions. As a throw to first, and that's your ball game. Union has won its first ever WPIAL championship. There it is. Champion, the Phoenix Lancers. Strike three. The Union Scotty, golden once again. One gold, not enough. How about two district gold and two state gold for the Lady Lancers? The top local athletes and the top sports moments all featured here, live or archived, at lcsportsnet.com. Anderson into the corner and scores for three. Good! Take turn and six. He wants to throw again. Directing traffic. Going for the quarterback in the end zone. Touchdown! Featuring over 100 broadcasts of county events in over a dozen sports. Your voice for Lawrence County sports. The gold ball headed home to Newcastle. This is the Lawrence County Sports Net. Coming to you live from Akershire Stadium on the North Shore of Pittsburgh, it's the WPIAL Class 1A Championship Game here at lcsportsnet.com in the Trip Live High School Sports Network. Top seeded Bishop Canavan versus number 10 seeded Union Scotties here for today's contest. I'm James Dotson alongside with Tim Continenza, and we're going to step aside for the playing of our national anthem. Your national anthem sung by Shenango High School's Antonio George and Angelina DePaulo. Glad to have you coverage on the Lawrence County Sports Net and the Trip Live High School Sports Network for tonight's today's 1A championship game. It's brought to you in part by Mainly Chiropractic, by Castle Asphalt, by Luxembourg, Garbett, Kelly, and George, by The Red Zone, by Cunningham Funeral Home, by Pontius Insurance, by Medore Bonner Law, by The Crane Room Grill, by Penn Ohio Bottled Water, by Door and Concrete, by Joseph's Marketplace, by Michael Kirkwood Jr. and Castle Realty by Works in Progress, by Hatch Early Learning Systems, by DNR Lawn Care, 
by Lawrence County Child and Youth Services, by the Tri-County Principals Association, by Something for Your Wall Photography, by the Union Volunteer Fire Department, the Union Educa Associa Education Association, and the Lawrence County Community Action Partnership. We're ready to go here about seven minutes from kickoff. With Tim Continenza, I'm James Dotson, the entire LC Sportsnet crew about ready to have some fun as we follow the Cinderella story Union Scotties here, Tim, all the way to the North Shore. It has been a great ride uh, through the playoffs, getting here to the championship game at Akershire Stadium, and we're going to see a Union team that's going to be probably flying high, meaning just high emotions to early game because they've never experienced something like this at this level and this opportunity to play in this in this type of field and stadium. So I imagine you're going to see a lot of, not necessarily jitters, just high energy to start the game here tonight. And then they'll settle in once the game begins, and we'll see how they react. And it's going to be an interesting matchup because, you know, this is kind of old hat here for uh, Bishop's ca Canada. Yeah, the defending WPL champions, and they return basically everybody from last year's championship team, including, very interestingly enough, two quarterbacks that have each thrown for over 1,000 yards on the season. That was never done in WPL history before this year. They and actually Sarah Catholic also eclipsed the uh, double 1,000-yard passing mark uh, with two quarterbacks on the season. But you got two quarterbacks that are really pretty similar. Jason Cross uh, was the one who really benefited last week. He had five total touchdowns. He actually just got an offer from Penn State this week. He's the only main player on the Kahneman team that has uh, a major college offer. Cole Oshevsky, uh, the sophomore quarterback, also can chuck it around very well. He was the main factor in the championship game here last year, but we expect to see both of them rotating in and out. Usually, Tim, when you have two quarterbacks, you have no quarterback. That's certainly not the case for the Crusaders. No, it's not, and I've seen this be successful at other places where you do have uh, the opportunity to bring them in and and use their skill sets to different levels. Uh, obviously, they're both great passers, and they can see the field well. And that's going to be key here for Union is to get some pressure and get some penetration against that offensive line to uh, disturb, make them throw the ball a little bit quicker than they normally would or possibly uh, get to the quarterback and uh, disrupt them that way. It's going to be a challenge for Union, and that's going to be a big part of tonight's game defensively. You're going to put a lot of pressure on your your defensive backs, but more important is your pressure is going to be on your front seven. This is the Luxembourg Garbit Kelly and George pregame show. Your insurance company not always on your side, but the law offices of Luxembourg Garbit Kelly and George always are. Visit them online at lgkg.com for your free consultation. Uh, it is a grass surface here. You've had turf all throughout the playoffs for most of these teams. Uh, here, Tim, as the teams are about ready to make their way out onto the field at the venue formerly known as Heinz Field. Bishop Kahneman about to come out of the tunnel. They are the top seed and defending champions. They defeated Jeanette 63 to 14 in the first round. In the quarterfinals, defeated Clareton 29 to six, and then a mercy rule 49 to 21 against Southside in the semifinals. For Union, the uh, much more underdog role, the first time ever a double digit seed has made it to the championship game. They were upset victors over Burgettstown uh, in the first round, 32 to seven. Then they stun Laurel uh, in the second round, taking down the two-seeded Spartans, 30-28, to avenging a loss earlier in the year in the Big 7 Conference. And then they hold serve against Rochester, a late uh, touchdown, gives them the 18-16 victory in that 10-14 rare semifinal matchup. So you got number one versus number 10, four games here at uh, Akershire Stadium, Tim, and this is the only one that does not feature one versus two. This Scotty's run has been magical. The first time they've been here in 49 years. It has been a magical run, and... I think that's part of the, the charm here tonight and the, probably the biggest story of all the four games that are being played here. And that's going to be interesting to see. They really could come in very loose. I think they're just the energy being here for the first time and experiencing Axter Stadium and all the accolades of being in the championship game, it's going to get a, a high energy. But in the same way, they could be really loose saying, we were a 10 seed. We weren't supposed to be here. All we have to do is go out and play our game. And then Scotty's now emerging out of the tunnel, running out on the field right now. As you're listening at lcsportsnet.com and hopefully watching our, our friends on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Remember, this game and the broadcast rights to this game are the sole and exclusive property of the WPL and the Trib Live High School Sports Network. And any use is broadcast without the express written consent from Trib HSSN. Trib Total Media and the WPL is strictly prohibited. One of the real cool things, too, both these schools for 1A, very solid benches in terms of uh, having players not having to play both ways. You have 26 on the roster for Union, about 40 for uh, 
uh, the Bishop Canavan Crusaders. Obviously, a numbers advantage for Canavan, but just Union to actually be able to go 11-on-11 11 11 throughout the entire year, uh, something they haven't done in, in many, many years. Yeah, and that's the key. I mean, as you get into the Class A level, you do happen to have maybe you know, over 50, maybe 75% or higher playing both ways, and that's a lot of snaps for any school to, to handle. But be able to practice during the week 11 against 11 properly and set yourself up for the opportunity to be successful each Friday night, huge. And I think that's what has really transpired this year here in uh, for Union. You have three multi-sport athletes as the captains for the Union Scotties, Brennan Porter, Mark Stanley, and Caden Fisher, your captains for Union. Union has won the toss and will receive Jason Cross out there with Lassay Sachs. Looks like Brendan Travis as well as one of the three starters, also number 44. Uh, that was Travis, excuse me, and 63, the final starter, Zeke Swift, the four starters for Canavan in the all gray uniform. So gray against white, a lot of blue in the stands. And how about the Union faithful on the far side of the field from us, Tim? Man, they brought the house. You know, last one out of Union, turn off the lights and lock the door. They're all here, and they should be. These yeah. kids deserve the, the, the support that they're going to get, and it's going to be exciting. Now, this is going to be really important here, not only to try to obviously get on the board first, but one of the keys tonight's game, or today's game, I should say, is when Union goes for two, score. They have not attempted an extra point all season long. They will get the ball first as you're listening at lcsportsnet.com. They'll be going right to left. Mike Gunn, the deep man, ready to return this kickoff. Standing at about his own 10-yard line. We're here at Akershire Stadium. The first time in 49 years the Scotties are playing for a WPIAL football championship. It's been a calendar year for the Scotties. They made it to the championship in hoops back in March. They won championship baseball back-to-back in June, and now the football team for the first time in nearly 50 years with a chance to mark their stamp in Scotty's history. Canterman has the ball teed off and we're about ready to kick off the first of four games here today. Killian Hoffels, the senior, will boot it away with the left foot and we're waiting for something. Just the officials to get the, uh, and, here we go. And there's a boot right now, and we are underway. It's going to be taken by an up man, Braylon Thomas, at the 20-yard line. He's going to go to the far side of the field. Has an avenue up the middle. Makes one man miss out to about the 44-yard line. Good return and great starting field position to begin the night for Union. Yeah, it was Edwards on the stop there on the special teams, but what a great field position here to start as uh, Thomas was able to see the vision really well and use his quarterback skills to get up close to midfield. And we'll mark it right at the 43-yard line. We'll take a look at the starting line. That's brought to you by Michael Kirkwood Jr. and Castle Realty. We thank him. Make sure you give him a call at 724-301-1482 for residential or commercial properties. We'll see plenty in the backfield throughout the course of the night. Braylon Thomas, the quarterback. Matt Stanley, the other quarterback. He actually lines up sidecar left. Here's a new formation right off the bat for Union. Matt's going to get a fake handoff. Keeper with Thomas. He cuts up the field and he's going to get about three or four yards on first down. Nice opening drive there as Cross was on the stop there for Bishop. But more importantly, I think here for Union to try to throw some different sights to see how that defense reacts. Obviously, they've looked at them all week long. It's good to do something a little different to start the ball game. You'll also see Mike Gunn, the running back, sometimes take snaps. Mark Stanley is the fullback here on second down and four. Dane Junkie, Maddox Thompson are the two receivers. Caden Fisher is a tight end. He's actually lined up as a slot right. They're going to go jet sweep. Thompson, he's going to get the handoff. He's going to get across midfield. And he's going to get a Scotty's first down to the 46-yard line of Canavan. Yeah, he just followed his block. is perfectly going left to right and was able to get to the edge and turn it upfield for the for the uh, first down run. Yeah, good carry, and that's going to be a pickup of eight yards for Thompson. That's actually, by the way, only the fifth carry of the year for Maddox Thompson. So again, a couple of new looks. You like that early, Tim? I do. It puts a different thought into the defense's mind. First and 10 from the 46-yard line. First drive of the game for Union. Another jet sweep action. They're going to play action, rolling out, and breaking off one man to tackle in the backfield is Thompson. Now he's going to tuck and run. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Hit out of bounds 
the flags will stay in the pocket, but Thompson, or Thomas, excuse me, could have lost about 10 yards, but luckily was able to escape and that's to gain a couple. Yeah, Lindsay was there to uh, make that stop for Bishop Canavan, but more importantly, it was how Thomas was able to keep that play alive, kind of break, shake off a tackle in the backfield, would have been a huge loss, about 10, 15 yards on the play, but he was able to roll out to his right and actually managed to gain a yard on the play. Gain of, that's a call, a gain of two. Second down and eight. 10.47 remaining in the opening quarter. Union on the first drive of the game. Stanley, that's Matt Stanley in the backfield sidecar left of Thomas. Hard count, long count, and I think he took too long. And that's one of the things here as we get the first penalty of the game. Big stadium atmosphere. You have to identify where the clock is, where the play clock is. A little bit different looking up rather than straight down the field. Yeah, it's just like you said, eye, eye level and understanding what you're looking for. All season long, they've been looking in the end zone for that at probably about five, anywhere between three to five feet tall. And it's totally different now that you have it in the middle of the uprights. Your offensive line, Jamel Mitchell, Jordan Brown, Mason Benedict, Robert McCurdy, and Mike Thomas. It's been that group throughout most of the season. Looks like a, maybe an unbalanced front here with a four wide receiver set. No one in the backfield with Thomas. He's going to look to throw, and he's going to fire one down the far sideline, going down the field, and going to be a one-handed attempt and unable to hold on. That was Grayson Blakely, I believe, as the receiver going down the near sideline. In coverage was McCaskill. Yeah, a huge thing. I, again, I like the idea. Even though it was first down and 15, go ahead and, and spread this defense out and you know test them long. Get them a chance to to understand that you're going to use the entire field. You're a running first oriented team, but you're not afraid of you use uh, Braylon Thomas and his ability to pass. We've seen him throw some touchdown passes during this run. Blakely, that would have been his first catch of the season. That would be a heck of a way to make your first catch. But now it's third down and 13 with the ball at midfield for Union. Thomas will drop back, looking to pass. Has time, has time. Now scrambles out to his right, still looking down the field. No one open. Has to tuck and run, and he may gain a yard. That's about it. Good coverage down the field will force a punting situation for the Scotties. Yeah, good defense there by Bishop Canavan as they were able to cover everyone and really gave Thomas no place to run as uh, Saunders was there for Canavan as they made the play there, but it's gonna put them in punt formation. But this is all right. You're gonna have a chance to try to really control the field position here. If Brantley Thomas can get a nice punt here, you can put them inside the 20, maybe inside the 15 here to start this drive. So just over 10 minutes left and an interesting looking punt formation. The center is the far left of the line. Thomas will boot it away. It'll be a knuckleballing punt and the Peter drills. It'll bounce at about the 25 yard line and stop right on a dime at the 20. So a 30 yard punt and Canavan will take over with their first possession of the game with 949 remaining in the first quarter. So a single first down for the Scotties at least can change field position a bit before we see well we're not sure which quarterback we're going to see whether it's Jason Cross or Koloshevsky out there it looks like it's Cross heading out there and we'll see if he actually lines up there but that's what my gut feeling will be yeah we'll also see throughout the course of the game if they alternate by play alternate by quarter we've seen a little bit of everything over the course of these last two years with the two signal callers we'll get the rest of the starting lineups again thank you to Michael Kirkwood Jr. and Castle Realty man in motion Going from right to left, they're going to go play action, and balls, balls on the balls ground, balls. balls on the ground, and it's going to be recovered back at the 10-yard line by Canavan. Miscommunication on the handoff, and number 63, Zeke Swift, the lineman, was actually the one to make the recovery. Yeah, kind of like an RPO there where Cross was going to bring the ball back out, and it got knocked out, and it went backwards, and Canavan was able to jump on it with a couple players around the 10-yard line, but a huge loss. Bring up second down and 20. Yeah, that's what you need, though. If you're Union, you need to be able to try to fall on those. Get a turnover early would be a huge part of it. Xavier Nelson, Jaden Lindsey, Lisey Lax, and Ajon Marshall, the wide receivers. Marquise Carter, a 1,000-yard running back in the backfield. Here comes a blitz. They're dropping back his cross. Has time. Fires on the middle of the field. Going deep down the middle. It's going to be a jump ball. It's going to be battled around and almost intercepted by Mike Gunn right in the Steelers' logo. Threw in a double coverage, ball kind of hung up there, Tim. Good job to high point it by the safety, Gunn. Yeah, Gunn did a great job. He kind of played center field again there and, and ran towards the ball and then was able to get his hands on it and kind of knock it away in, in an attempt to make that interception. But he'll bring up third down and long. First year coach Kim Needballa said, Tim, that one of the main goals is you have to keep players in front of you. You can't let anybody get deep. It looked like LaSalax might have been getting a step beyond, but... The closing speed of Gunn was able to track it down and knock it away. 
Third down, 19 to go. Ball at their own 11 yard line for Canavan. Just three minutes into this contest. Cross will again look back, looking for a screen. Now, he's going to be sacked. He's going to be driven down inside the five yard line. The Union defense has come to play here early on. Mark Stanley was there defensively there for Union. And what a great job. That's such a huge play. They've lost 15 yards on this drive and they'll have to punt from inside their own end zone again this will set up great field position for union union has to take advantage of this opportunity and they're going to have mike gun back if he can get a good return here at least catch the ball make sure you yeah. have secured the ball and have great field position for the offense xavier nelson will punt from the middle of his own end zone he gets the snap and he's able to get a low line drive off the center fielder will let it bounce and he'll catch it on one bounce at the 45 yard line of canavan he's got to see him up the sideline down at the 31 yard line he's tripped up if he gets past that one he's off to the races but a great field position union will start at the canavan 33 yard line and yeah, there's that baseball mentality on that ground ball he picked it up and rolled to his right once he had that he had steam and it was a shoestring tackle really prevented a huge return there, but a great field position inside the 35 to start here for the Scotties. 8.09 remaining, Union with their second possession here of this Class 1A championship. By the way, give credit to a Brennan Porter, Mark Stanley, and Caden Fisher all in there on that sack to set up the short field now for Union at the 33-yard line. Going to be a design run to the right for Thomas, looking for room, not much of it on the right side, maybe a gain of one, that's about it. Holman was there for Bishop Canavan, but more importantly here, you gotta establish the run here. That is the bread and butter here for the Scotties. They're gonna use all their attack, and obviously Braylon Thomas will be the feature guy on each and every play, being the quarterback and a guy who can always make something happen. A 1,000 yard passer and rusher on the season. We've gotten those numbers confirmed. 1,048 yards on the ground with 10 touchdowns on the year, or that's through the air, excuse me, on the ground, 1,375. 17 rushing touchdowns for the junior quarterback. He sets up at a pistol on second and 10, some miscommunication. We're getting our first Pontius Insurance timeout of the contest. Called by Union. Call Agent Dan Pontius, Jessica Wilden, and Tracy Giddings. To get started today, visit PontiusInsurance.com. Request a quote, auto, home, business, or life at PontiusInsurance.com. Also want to give a shout out to our friends at Penn Ohio Bottled Water. Make sure you give them a call for delivery of your three or five gallon water cooler system so you can get cases of the bottled water delivered straight to your home. Stay refreshed by enjoying hot or cold water at the click of a button or enjoy a cup of coffee with their bottom loading water cooler options. 724 remaining in quarter number one, the class 1A championship game, top seeded Canavan, 10 seed Union and so far, uh, Union has shown that they're not intimidated by the top seed or by playing in this big stadium. No, not at all. They came out with high energy, and they have taken full advantage of it. This is a big down, though, on second down. Obviously, this offense needs to get going forward here a little bit to bring up a third down and manageable. It's second down and 10. Gun to the right of Thomas. He is in the gun. Thomas has to make a man miss in the back. And I'll scrambling to his right, trying to direct traffic. He's going to tuck and run, and he's going to get tripped up at about the 30-yard line. So a nice gain of about three or four yards. And again, to make this a little bit more manageable, call it third down and six coming up. Well, and again, understand the, the way Union plays. This is two-down territory for them. So again, getting three here on second down was huge. They just, again, a shoestring tackle away from a big gainer there by Thomas. So they're gonna get one. It's just a matter of when that comes their way. I believe it was Henry Barbish who made the shoestring tackle on the far side. Taylor, Lax, Collins also on the defensive line. Five men in the secondary, no men in the backfield on third down and six. Thomas looking down the field, he's gonna fire towards the far sideline, trying to adjust in the air, and a one-handed catch attempt, he hold on to it. No, he did oh. not. Matt Stanley nearly made a spectacular catch. He was in double coverage with McCaskill, and also back there was Jason Cross. And man, we're gonna try to hopefully see a replay here because yeah, I thought Stanley I thought was able to it. hang on to it. Our friends at Trib providing the replay. A beautiful pass to the near sideline. Great adjustment in the air, Tim. And of course, we end up with an official right official in front right of us. Front of, so we'll <laughs> beautiful. Have to, we'll have to trust the official there. It looked like he had it, but maybe going to the ground is where he lost it. But now yeah. on fourth down and six, Tim, only 10 seconds on the play clock. Union's gonna have to hurry up to the line. Here they come. 
Quickly to the line, still five seconds. Just now to the line, I think Coach Nee. Yeah, they're gonna use that second timeout here. He's furious, his team would not get lined up. Another Pontius Insurance timeout, but Tim, talk about the adjustment in the air on that last play by Matt Stanley. Yeah, he did a great job. He looked back at that pass there from, from Braylon, and then he moved to his left to get his shoulder, uh, get his outside shoulder in to make that catch, and literally gave himself the best opportunity in double coverage, which was really impressive and the ball was right there, so Thomas delivered it perfectly. It's just unfortunate they couldn't come down with the play, uh, that, but they'll bring up a fourth down here. This is gonna be interesting to see how Coach Nee handles this play. I'm, I'm wondering if they'll go over the middle. We haven't seen him done, use the middle of the field, and during the playoff run, over the middle has been very accessible for them. Sun comes out for fourth down and six from the 30-yard line, 6.34 remaining in the opening quarter. They're going to Wildcat look here. Check this out. Gunn yeah. is going to get the snap. He's going to bring Thomas in motion from the wide receiver position. They're going to hand it off to Thomas, who's not going to look to throw on the out. He's and it's going to be caught at the 20-yard line. First down, Union. Into the bag of tricks goes Coach Knee to move the chains. Exactly what they needed as McCaskill was, uh, or Marshall was there for, or that was Jonky making the catch. Yes. Excuse me. But, yeah, but more importantly, it was what that design with the Wildcat as Gunn got the uh, snap, handed off to Thomas, and Thomas rolling to his left, found his receiver and jockey open at the 20, and they were able to pick up that first down on fourth down and seven. What a beautiful one as we enter the red zone as well to go against your body, rolling out to the left, Tim, impressive. They're gonna go Wildcat again. Thomas is gonna be a receiver to the left. He's gonna come in motion again. Gunn will get the handoff. They're gonna hand it off. Thomas no, is gonna look to throw it again. Thomas is gonna look to throw it again. Now he's got the scramble to his right, looking for an opening. He's gonna try to get to the corner and he does and will pick up a couple of yards out of bounds on about the 17 yard line. Yeah, it was supposed to be a throwback to the left hand side and he was wide open, but the Bishop Canavan was there as Travis was tracing down Braylon Thomas there and prevented that pass. As we are in the red zone, make sure you stop at the red zone on Wilmington Road in Nishana for all your county sporting apparel needs. 5.51 remaining in the opening quarter. You like that they went right back to that formation, tried to show something different, if not uh, for the here's pressure. Here's that trip both sides. All right, another new formation. We saw, saw this, this earlier. Against Laurel, right. They have only three down linemen right in front. Main in motion from the slot is Gunn. Two linemen are set up as trips on both sides of the field. Thomas looking for room, trying to bounce outside, and that's going nowhere. This one was eaten up in the backfield for a big loss. I believe it was Lindsey actually checking number six, Nelson coming in there as well. Yeah, it was just one of the scenarios that they scouted that one perfectly and they knew Braylon would keep it. And unfortunately, it was a, uh, with no one really in front of the blocker there, he was able to r get into the backfield and make that stop. Well, we'll see if they come back to that later, because we've seen them throw out of that formation uh, as well. Worked for a 45-yard completion to Caden Fisher. Well, we'll see now with third down, 13 to go with the ball at the 22-yard line of Union. Need to get inside the 10 to move the chains. Thomas looks to throw, that's a quarterback draw, up the middle, makes one man miss, but not a lot of room before he's gobbled up after about a three-yard gain to the 20-yard line, so fourth down and long coming up. Another fourth down scenario, McCaskill there defensively for the Crusaders. But more importantly, this is again, they haven't used over the middle of the field yet, passing mm -hmm. the ball. I'm curious to see if they'll try to go this time on fourth down and long. That quarterback draw worked to perfection for the late touchdown for Union in their win against Rochester. But now they have to break the huddle on fourth and 12 from the 21 yard line. Scotties need to get inside the 10 to move the chains. No one in the backfield with Thomas. He gets the snap. He looks, pumps over the middle, throws over the middle. Man wide open. Caught at the five. Bring it towards the near sideline is Thompson. He's got the first down. You called it, Tim. Look over the middle of the field, and it was wide open for Maddox Thompson. Yeah, Jason Cross had no idea what was going to happen there as uh, McCaskill was defensively for the Crusaders. But more important, Matt Stanley sold that perfectly. He looked outside, came back in and he was wide open. Thomas almost paused, couldn't believe how wide open he was. You know what, it, he had the extra time, he let Thompson come across and get out of the way of the linebacker who was spying him. That was beautiful yep. eye work to move, <laughs> really freeze the linebacker. Now we're gonna go first and goal from the six, Wildcat look with Matt Stanley. 
Cartwright also in there. He's going to be a lead blocker. And Stanley tries to go to the right, makes one man miss, cuts back upfield, and he's going to meet a gang of gray, and he's going to be driven back all the way to the 10 yard line. Maybe a gain of one on this yeah, first carry of the game for the, Stanley. He's going to get credit to the five yard line. He made a nice, nifty move back inside, leading that defensive attack was Taylor for the Crusaders. But more importantly, this is a huge, huge four down series for Union. They have to get on the scoreboard first and really get, can't, gotta take advantage of this field position and two fourth down successes. They had to keep this drive alive. 10th play of the drive and as you mentioned, yes, two times already successful on fourth down. They're gonna go empty set on second and goal from the five down to three minutes remaining in the opening quarter. Thomas looking to throw, scrambling out to his right, looking for a man in the back in the end zone, no one there and he's just gonna throw this one into the first row and it's gonna be third down and five upcoming. Yeah. Basically, just kind of a roll out to the short side of the field to the right side where his throwing arm is, and there was just nobody. It was all covered, nobody open. And Thomas did the correct thing, just unleashing it and bringing it up third down. Now, here's a scenario where you may want to see maybe kind of a, a misdirection or a kind of a jet sweep. Try to get to the edge here and see if one of the guys, if it's gun on a jet sweep or if it's a Stanley or something like that, Try to get to the edge and turn it upfield quickly. Tough to do against such a speedy Canavan defense. Eight seconds on the play clock as the Scotties get to the line on third and goal from the five. Thomas in the gun, only man back there. He's going to roll immediately to his left. He thinks he's got an opening. It's going to be a race to the pylon. Can he get there first? Diving for it. Did he keep the ball inside? He did. Touchdown, Union. What it's, not, it's not the jet sweep to the edge, Tim. The quarterback does it himself. Yeah, he got to the edge. That's the thing. He went left side. And what let his blockers out there used his speed once he was able to turn that corner like you mentioned It was a race to the pylon and he stuck the ball out just enough as he hit the pylon going out of bounds And gets into the end zone for the first score here tonight a huge two-pointer coming up here for Union This is gonna be a big part of the game how successful Union could be when they go for two here for the R Cunningham point after Five minutes, 23 seconds on that drive. Braylon Thomas caps off the 11 play, 33 yard drive. With the touchdown, Union up six nothing. They're gonna bring a man in motion out of the backfield. It's gun. Thomas looking for a man over the middle. He's got him in the middle of the end zone. That's the first conversion that they've had since the opening round. And Grayson Blakely is gonna be the one to receive it. Union eight, Bishop Canavan zero. The 10 seed on top. Don't go anywhere, folks. The 1A championship right here. You're listening to it at lcsportsnet.com. Has your child's early education slowed down or even paused due to the pandemic? This is crucial time you can't get back. LCAP can keep your little learner on track for success. We have options for working and non-working parents with in-person childcare and age-appropriate virtual learning to keep them busy and engaged. Parents, don't hit pause on early learning. Lawrence County Community Action Partnership can jumpstart their future. Learn more at LCAP.org. For more than 120 years, people have been relying upon Martindale Hubble's AV preeminent rating to select their attorneys. If you're involved in a workers' compensation situation, you should do the same. LGKG has been AV rated for over 40 years. Not only do you get eight points on the board, Tim, but you also take over five minutes off the clock. Braylon Thomas from five yards out. Grayson Blakely gets the reception for the conversion. It's 8 nothing Union over the top seed of Crusaders. And that is our Joseph's Marketplace driving recap. Squib kick taken by an upman at the 35-yard line out to about the 40 where Elijah, Bish, or Elijah Booker excuse me, will usher Keyshawn McCaskill out of bounds. So second drive coming up for the Canavan Crusaders, and they do it nothing from backwards in their first drive. And that recap again by Joseph's Marketplace, Newcastle's family-owned hometown grocery store and coffee shop. Check out their new cafe, bakery section, and place a to-go order at josephnc.com. Take a look at the starting defense for the Scotties after this first down play. They're gonna go four receiver set for Canavan. They're gonna go hand off to their thousand yard back on the left edge and he gains maybe a yard. That's it for Marquise Carter. A whole gang of white jerseys there in the tackle. Jamel Mitchell, Mark Stanley, Antonio Perez are the linemen. Brennan Porter made that tackle along with Matt Stanley. They're the two inside linebackers. Caden Fisher, Maddox Thompson, the outside backers. And then the secondary, you'll see Dane Jonke, Elijah Booker, Grayson Blakely, and Mike Gunn. Huge series here is defensively for Union. They want to get a three and out after securing that first score of the game. Try to control the tempo of tonight's 
or I should say this morning's game. Four players on this Canavan team with a thousand yards set, and there's gonna be multiple movements on this one. I'm not sure they even got the, the playoff in time. Uh, that's it, they got a timeout before the snap Back. was delivered, so another Pontius Insurance timeout. Let's take another quick one here as well. Back in a moment, it's the Class 1A Football Championships here at lcsportsnet.com. For 20 years, Mele Chiropractic has treated athletes of all ages to help them get safely back to the top of their game. Mele Chiropractic has three full-time doctors in their office, and all three are former area athletes who have had to battle injuries throughout their careers. They want to help you get safely back on your feet. But more importantly, help stop the injuries before they happen. Prehab before you rehab. Attention all high school student athletes. During your sports season, a $25 visit to the Mele Chiropractic office includes an adjustment and or all therapies necessary. From the athletes of tomorrow to the weekend warriors and everything in between, let Mele Chiropractic keep you in the game. Coming out of the timeout, it will be second down and nine to go with 2.03 remaining in the opening quarter. Motion out of the backfield, they're gonna go bubble screen near sideline and a whistle and I think we had movement before the snap. We did. Against Canavan. So this will push the Crusaders back, their first penalty of the game. And again, Union Faithful out in full force. I mean, you gotta remember this, they, you know, 60 some thousand seat stadium and almost the entire uh, bleachers in the lower level on the far sideline in blue and white over there. Yeah. Great showing here tonight for our union and their supporters as they really have done a great job. Even the second level in the middle yeah. is, is quite filled. So it, it, they've done a terrific job uh, coming here to support their Scotties. Xavier Nelson was the one who moved early. He's got over 1,000 uh, receiving yards on the year and 22 touchdowns. He's one of the main factors to look at, as is Marquise Carter. Man in motion from the slot. It's going to be a pop pass forward to the man from the slot, and he's able to bounce off a couple of tacklers, get back to about the original line of scrimmage. Stanley and Thompson make the tackle. That was Ajon Marshall who will get credit for the reception on that, on the little pop pass forward. Yeah, that's getting more and more popular in high school football, and it's a safe play because if you drop it, it's just an incomplete pass, and you can turn it upfield. It's kind of like a shovel pass, you know, even a little yeah. shorter than it used to be. They're going to bring in Deshaun Lax, wearing number 36 tonight, not number 64. And we're going to have another whistle and another timeout. So both teams wow. have had to use two timeouts here in the opening quarter, Tim. 129 remaining in the opening frame. Union, the 10 seed, with an 8 nothing lead over Bishop Canavan. Yeah, it was a uh, surprising to see both teams have to use it. It makes sense, though. If you're not used to seeing how close where the time clock is and just getting used to your your surroundings for the first time in a huge stadium like this it's a totally different feel it's, it's very similar to when we do the basketball games when they're mm -hmm. you have such an open space it takes a while for shooters to kind of get that feel where the where the hoop is mm -hmm. same type of here for quarterbacks and offensive coordinators and that to get the play in understanding how to communicate between the benches and the players to make that play so not surprising but mm -hmm. you hate to see it, but you'd rather use it here in the first half and have a very more successful second half to save those timeouts later when they really matter. Even think of it this way, Tim, too. C consider the fact that you have uh, all the technology with the uh, coaches' booths and everything. You've got to make sure you have a lot further distance to get down to field level here than you do at most high school stadiums. So Without a doubt. Everything has to be accounted for. Marquise Carter's going to go to the right of the quarterback. Stack receivers each way on third down and eight. Plenty of time now scrambling out to his right. is cross looking for a man down the field, being chased from behind. He's going to tuck and run, and he's going to have just enough to move the chains. Giving chase was uh, Stanley as well as Jamel Mitchell, but Cross just fast enough to move the chains using the legs. Yeah, he was able to escape that defensive pressure, but that's the key, though. I'm really impressed so far in this game. Even though he was able to turn it upfield to get that first down here for the Crusaders. More importantly, it's the pressure that Union's getting to the quarterback, disrupting the play. Sometimes he's gonna make a great play. You know, the quarterbacks are capable of that. Yeah, Cross the more agile, now over uh, 300 rushing yards on the season. He has 12 rushing touchdowns to go with his 18 with the arm. Man in motion again is Marshall. Play action to throw down the near sideline. One-on-one -on -one coverage going over the top and just out of the reach of a diving Xavier Nelson as he got a step on the defender, Dane Jonke. Got to be careful uh, keeping the eyes in the backfield against the speedster and Xavier Nelson. Yeah, Jonke there played it best he could as he was watching the pass and then trying to get up, but the 
receiver was able to get behind him. It was just a little too far in front of him for the completion to be made. But it'll bring up second down and long coming up here for the Crusaders. Yeah, it's just a go route, and the ball just went a little bit too far. Ball on the right hash. Again, a four-receiver set on second and ten. They're going to go bubble screen to the near side. Marshall catches at the line of scrimmage and maybe gets back to the line, and that's it. Well defensed this time by Jonky to force him back inside where look at you had Antonio Perez waiting for him as well as Caden Fisher. Yeah, there was a trio there ready for to make that play. They seen that development and they came up quickly on the receiver and never gave him a chance to turn it upfield. And now we're facing another third down and long scenario here for the Crusaders. Less than a minute to play in the opening quarter. Eight nothing Union, Crusaders with their second possession of the game. It'll be a third down and 10. So you know, two receivers to the short side of the field to the right, two players in the backfield. This is Cole Oshuski now at the quarterback position here, Tim, on third down and 10. He bobbles the snap. He's going to get uh, handed off just barely, and going nowhere on the play is the running back. Union stuffs him right at the line. Caden Fisher was there defensively for Union and did a great job. Also, it was Mitchell there as they were able to combine on that tackle. Really control that line of scrimmage and, and fill that hole before the, the they can make it play on that running play. Yeah, keep an eye on that. They had both Olszewski and Cross as quarterbacks in the backfield there, Tim. So watch for that formation again down the stretch. And we're gonna have a whistle and I think, uh, well, we're we're just, nope, we're out, yeah. no. The Pigeons have come out. They are celebrating as the Union faithful are at the end of quarter number one. It is Union eight. Bishop Canavan zero, the Class 1A championship only here on the 305 High School Sports Network. You're listening at lcsportsnetwork.com. <laughs> at R. Cunningham Funeral Home and Crematory, we are a proud sixth generation family owned and operated funeral home located centrally in the Newcastle and Neshannock communities. Our large facility and experienced staff allows us to accommodate any family with personalized services. To learn more about our services and pre-planning, visit our website at www.cunninghamfh.com or follow us on Facebook. Allow our family to help your family. When the high school season heats up, make sure you have the best gear to support your school. Head to the Red Zone on Wilmington Road in the Shannon for all your county sporting apparel needs. From sporting goods to custom apparel to embroidery and more, the Red Zone has it all quality gear for all eight schools in the county of champions stop by and enter the red zone or visit them online at theredzonesports.com score big at the red zone second quarter about to get underway here from Akershire stadium and the 10 seeded union scotties lead the top seed bishop canterbury crusaders by a score of eight to nothing. Mind you, coming up at the half, we'll have our Castle Asphalt Halftime Show. If you're looking for quality and cost-effective paving and construction services, well, you've come to the right place. Castle Asphalt and Construction will make your visions for your project a reality. The 12-1 Crusaders, 12-1 record on the year. Union, 10-3 on the season. We were told that we weren't going to have really big, long media timeouts, but I guess no one got the, menu, uh, the memo on the Akershire Stadium Jumbotron, as we're going to have the, uh, a bit of an extended timeout, but a great stop on third and long. They recognized the formation and they stuffed Marquise Carter in the backfield. Play. They got the, they were able to make the stop after the big score. So they're eight nothing, they got the stop. That's the key, is that they came out and got the stop and now they're gonna get the ball back. So Canavan will be punting from the Union 42 yard line. Again, there's hanging on the field. I guess they have one more uh, commercial to go. Right? Uh, I guess so, which means yeah. we give a chance to give a shout out to our friends at Cunningham Funeral Home because Union finally got a Cunningham conversion uh, on their first drive. Cunningham Funeral Home understands the importance of pets and the impact they have on your lives. On pet, Their on-site pet crematory ensures your pet is cared for with love and compassion. This ball is going to bounce at about the 20-yard line on the punt and die right at the 10, so that's where Union will take over first and 10 to begin their third drive of the game. Braylon Thomas, 26 yards through the air, a couple of huge fourth down conversions on both of his completions, Tim, but he then runs it in from uh, uh, five yards out to have our only score of the game so far. Yeah, we've seen Coach Knee use some different formations early in this ball game in the first quarter to try to catch Kinnevin off balance. And let's see how he attacks here in a second. Do they go back to the bread and butter, what they normally do at their own 10 yard line, or will he still be pulling out the bags of tricks that he wants to show 
Canavan and catch them off guard. Well, we've seen, uh, well, I guess we've seen three Wildcat snaps, two with Mike Dunn and one with Matt Stanley. Empty set here. Braylon Thomas is the quarterback. He's going to bring double tight end set to the left, and he's going to go quarterback draw to the opposite side of the field, and he's going to fight forward for a gain of maybe one or two. Not a lot of room on first down. Jaden Lindsay there defensively holding his position to get Thomas down and gain about maybe two and a half, three on the play, but that's all right. Again, you're looking just to get that kind of three yards in a cloud of dust and try to break something through. Obviously, right now, it'll be interested to see if he starts using either Mike or Matt or Mark Stanley in the offense uh, running the ball. Yeah, Matt especially has been very effective. Mark's almost like an extra lineman. He's going to be the lead blocker as it's going to be another quarterback keeper for Thomas, and he hesitates. He's got an opening. He's out past the 15, past the 20. It's a first down union on a gain of about 10 yards for the sophomore, or for the junior quarterback. He's now got 11 carries for 26 yards. Yeah, McCaskill's there to finally bring him down after he moved the sticks here for Union, but a nice run there by Thomas as he was able to go right and then cut it upfield, cut back a little bit, and get the Jets going to pick up that first down. Yeah, what patience you see from him running the football? Really key. He will check out though. Matt Stanley will be the Wildcat quarterback on first and 10 from their own 23 yard line. Union with the eight nothing advantage. High snap, good job to grab the rebound there by Matt Stanley, but he's gonna be dragged down almost immediately in the backfield and driven out well late, but they're gonna allow that to go as the tackle was in progress, though the Union faithful on the far sideline, not too pleased. Yeah, that play went a little long. They're going to lose a couple on the play, but more importantly is uh, how you handle the Wildcat because obviously they're going to be prepared for that. They've been preparing all week knowing that Matt Stanley and Mike Gunn and others will be there. We're going to have to do something a little different here. I think we have an injured Canavan player down and it is uh, Barbich for Canavan it's and sophomore defensive end 6'4", 205. He's now getting to his feet. He's going to get off on his own power. That's good to see. Yep, no lip, so that's good to see. It's not like a lower injury. But here's a scenario where, like I was saying, when you're using the Wildcat, you're going to have to do something a little different than you normally do just to get this defense off guard because they've been practicing against that all week. They've seen all the films. They know 99% of the time when Gunn or Stanley is at quarterback, it is a quarterback keep. Yeah, you, you Gunn has thrown one pass on the year. Matt has kept it on every single play. And again, you wonder, you're going to see similar formations, but you're going to see wrinkles out of it, something that hasn't been put on film yet. Something you've been practicing all season long, waiting for this opportunity. Thomas in the gun on second or on first and ten is going to roll out, throw down the field, has a man open, coming back to it, and Matt Stanley makes an enormous catch. What a play. He oh. just mossed the defender at the 43-yard line. He was covered by two defenders, stopped and jumped, got inside the two, and made a play on the castle to get inside to make this catch. Watch this. A wheel route, and he Watch finds him come it. come back for the ball and jump up and get it between the two Crusaders. Wow. What a great play there for Union to get that first down and keep this drive alive. Gain of 20 and a first down as he literally ripped it away on the wheel route from Jason Cross, the safety who was coming over trying to make the pick. Thomas is going to roll out to his right, makes one man miss in the backfield, now scrambling back, running out of time. He's going to tuck, run, he throws it at the last second to Mark Stanley, and he's going to make about a 10-yard gain on the play. We're going to double check. That is his third catch of the season for Mark Stanley. And how about the linemen making sure they don't go downfield to ruin that play either? Yeah, huge play there for the, the linemen knowing what they do. But Mark Stanley, every time he gets the ball, he can make a play. We, You know his average is ridiculous when he has the ball in his hand. And what a great job here, vision by Thomas to keep the play alive, look back to his right. A jump pass. A, a jump pass <laughs> throw, exactly. And hit him on the numbers and then let – Mark Stanley do what he does best. Looks like they're practicing for basketball season. Big coach Mark Stanley, he's missing most of his team because they're right here playing at Heinz Field. Second down and nine, Thomas again looking to throw. Fires on the run, caught on the near sideline and dragged out of bounds at the 15, or I'm sorry, at the 37 yard line. Matt Stanley with another catch, three straight completions on the drive and another first down. Yeah, again, keeping this drive alive, keeping Canavan off balance. That's what, exactly what they want to do. When they're looking to run, throw. When they're looking to throw, they're going to run in a, a type of scenario. And Braylon Thomas has done a great job, at, uh, really, with his vision.
throughout this ball game, finding receivers. First, Mark Stanley, and then Matt Stanley on the previous play. Union with six first downs now in the contest. Bishop Canavan just won. 9-14 remaining in the first half. Union trying to extend an 8-0 lead. They're driving at the 38-yard line of Canavan. Stanley will get the Wildcat snap. He'll go to the left, has a couple blockers in front of him, including big Mark Stanley. And now it's going to be a rugby scrum forward inside the 30, down to the 29-yard line. Huge gain on first down as the Union offensive line and company exerting their will. Yeah, it, it took nine yards before Travis was able to, to secure the tackle there for Canavan. And a big first down run here for for the Union Scotties. Yeah, gain of nine officially, second down and one again. If you're getting nine yards on first down, it really opens up this playbook on second down, Tim. And you definitely, this when you get in this type of territory, you've got to be thinking end zone. Won't be surprised if you go deep here into the corner. It said no, it is going to be a designed run for Stanley at the quarterback position. Makes one man miss in the backfield, but he's going to be lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. In fact, may have lost a half yard. It's going to be third down and about two to go. And that's not, it's a safe play. You, you, I mean, that's the bread and butter to run the ball. Let's be honest. I mean, Thomas is a great thrower, and but on, on second down and one, I love the idea of trying to go deep because you have third and fourth down to pick up that one yard. And that's what they did on the last second down and one where they had Thomas roll out and find a man, again, on a safe play. No gain on that carry. It'll be third down and about a yard, maybe a yard and a half to go. Ball to 29-yard line. Union needs to get inside the 28 to move the chains. Down to eight minutes remaining in the first half. Thomas is going to go under center. Don't see this much. And he's going to get a little help from the man behind him pushing forward on a quarterback sneak. He's close to the sticks. I don't know if he's there. This is going to be an interesting mark. Yeah, not a lot of surge, though. He did get a little bush push from Mark Stanley. That's yeah. Didn't need much. So another third down conversion. I'd say the first third down conversion of the night for Union. I'm saying night. We still haven't even, yeah, hit, we still haven't <laughs> even hit the afternoon yet. Yeah, it's morning. Breakfast ball here at the North Shore. And by the way, this will be play number 10 of the drive that started back at their own 10-yard line, Tim. Uh, this has been a fantastic drive here for Union. You had to take advantage of this opportunity. Empty set with Thomas in the gun on first and 10. Balls at the Canavan 28 on the left hash. Quarterback draw up the middle. Has some room. Breaks to the outside. And he's going to have the ball loose. stripped away from at the 25-yard line, but it looks like Union is going to fall back on it. Yeah, they did, and I believe... That was Fisher who may yeah. have got to it. Yeah, Fisher makes the recovery. Good job to let the players go by as we check out the replay. And it was uh, number it was nine who made, who made the who hit. Made the, yeah, who stripped the ball away. So huge second down coming up here. You still got you know yardage on the play, but you got to take advantage of this opportunity. Thomas made a nice move, but McCaskill made a nice strip of the ball. They gave him a gain of four. Man in motion on a jet sweep. They're going to hand it off to him. That's Maddox Thompson. Tries to cut up field. Not much room, but he's going to still fight. Breaks out of a couple of tackles. They're trying to strip it again. you got to protect the ball in those scenarios because they're letting them play to the whistle. Yeah, letting them play after the whistle, even on that one, maybe. Yeah, Lax was there trying to strip that ball away for Canavan, and that's just good coaching. Always, you know, when you're down and you're in your territory defensively, you have an opportunity to go after the ball. You do it. And that's a really good execution on Canavan's part. Yeah, I believe it was uh, Deshaun Lax who was the first one in there who was literally holding him up. So Lax, we've actually seen now wearing both 64 and 36 over the course of this game. He does flip back and forth as necessary. You can find jockey or gun here on a, on a out pattern. Now that's going to be the final Pontius Insurance timeout called by the Scotties. While we have a moment, if you want to give a special shout out uh, to the Union Scotties, courtesy of the Union Area, Ed Area Education Association. Hey, Scotty fans, it's Mrs. Ryan and Miss Felina here on behalf of the Union Area Education Association. And we want to wish all of our Scotties good luck this season. Go, Go Scotties! We thank them for their support of Scotty Athletics. We also want to give a shout out to our friends at the Union Volunteer Fire Department. They're proud supporters of all Union Area Athletics and uh, wish them good luck today and all season long. And we thank him for their coverage. They remind you as well to check out their Facebook page for giveaways and other fun events happening at the Union Volunteer Fire Department. Tim Continenz alongside, real quick, give a shout out to the entire crew doing work today. Uh, right now, Ashley Haltula down on the field with Rob Natell. You're gonna have uh, Tyler Aaron down at field level as well. We're gonna try to get him on the mic a little bit here. He doesn't know that at halftime. He, he can't hear me, can he? <laughs> yes, he can. Love what he's doing. Uh, gotta give a shout out to uh, Tweety Bird Katie 
And, of course, uh, Spencer running the show with us as well. Third down, handoff to Gunn. He's looking to throw it back to Thomas. Not there. Now he's going to tuck and run to the near side, lowers his shoulder. He's going to get dragged out of bounds at about the 20-yard line. So, again, the bag of tricks, but it was well read by Canavan. Good job by Gunn to still pick up four yards. Yeah, that's the most important part. Gunn understood what was in front of him and seen the yarders grab it. Bring up a manageable fourth down. On the last drive where they scored their first touchdown, they converted twice on fourth down. So here's another opportunity to convert on fourth down. Fourth down and two. You got your whole playbook in front of you to choose here for Coach Nee. Ball right at the 20 yard line. This is the 13th play of the drive that has already taken six minutes, or yeah, six minutes off of the clock. Two receivers left, one to the right, tight end in the slot as well. Man in motion is done coming out of the backfield, looking left. On a bubble screen, it's well read. Thomas has to throw back over the middle. Man open, but he threw it behind him, incomplete. Thompson was open in the middle. Flag thrown at the end of the play, Tim. Flag thrown yeah. at the end of the play as Thomas. He got held. Michael Thomas was in with Davion Taylor, and something was done at the end of the play. Oh, they're going to say illegal man downfield, so it's just going to be turnover on downs. They'll decline the penalty. So and That's uh, just when you extend yeah. a play like that, you're one of the – Offensive lineman is going to go down looking for a block. That's not unusual to happen. Uh, but unfortunately, the Scott is unable to convert on that fourth down. And they'll go back on defense. Again, I, I've talked about this before, but you want to control field position. This is huge here for the Union defense to come up and try to prevent a, a big drive here for Canavan. First and 10, cross on the 20 yard line, throw to the near sideline, caught at the 25 yard line, shake and bake, first down and more, out past the 35, out to about the 38 yard line. That was Jaden Lindsay making the catch for 18 yards, biggest play of the game so far of the night. Yeah, Mitchell was there to run him down at the 38 yard line to get that tackle. More importantly here is that it was a first down on first down play. So you gotta try to keep them in front of the sticks and bring, make them mm -hmm. use their downs. Uh, and use the clock. I mean, Union just spent over six minutes on that 13-play drive. They didn't get points, but they have shortened the game, which is what you need to do against a Canavan team that can basically score at will. Cross gets the hand or gets the snap, now trying to scramble around. Not much room. Right. Able to escape once, twice. Ball's loose Ball's on loose. the ground. Jamel Mitchell is on top of it for the Scotties. He definitely has it. He was right there first. He covered it up in high school football. You're the first of the ball. You covered it up. It's going to be Scotty's ball. You have a door bonner change in possession. Jamel Mitchell makes the big recovery. We'll check on the replay who made the hit. As he was splitting through, it actually was Mitchell, Mitchell who ripped it out first. first. Yes. You have a door bonner change in possession, a community firm with a personal connection and individualized service. Make sure you protect your possessions with Medor Bonner Law. It's a huge play. Another second opportunity deep in Canavan territory here for the Scotties. I have a stat for you coming after this first down play. Ball at the 29 yard line, Union up eight nothing. Thomas drops back, empty set, pumps. Coming down the near sideline, one on one coverage and it's gonna be incomplete as getting tangled up. Really no opening whatsoever. Lindsay in coverage on Jonky. Yeah, it was double coverage there. It was just a situation where he wanted to go deep Try to extend that defense. So here's the stat, Tim. Union has drives of five plays, 11 plays, and 13 plays. Then that pass right there was play number 30 run by the Union offense in this game with 4.55 remaining in the first half. Canavan has run a total of eight, nine now, nine plays. Yeah, three to one edge, you gotta love that if you're Union, and that's gonna be key in this game, to keep it short and be able to grind out this time and get on the scoreboard. And the second time that they've started in plus territory. Thomas throws a bubble screen to the far sidelines. Gonna be caught by Maddox Thompson right at the line of scrimmage but then going nowhere as Ajon Marshall came right in and made the hit right as the ball was completed. Not a bad idea trying to get one of your receivers in a one-on-one -on -one and he's done a nice job this year when he's had opportunities but Canavan smelled it out perfectly and was able to prevent it again. Interesting enough, I'm going to say the same thing I talked about before. We were seeing everything on the outside. Mm -hmm. It's going to open up something over the middle here. If they can run something similar to what they did early in the first quarter, watch for it here and see if Thomas can find one of his receivers over the middle. Empty set, third down and 10. 
Going to be a design run to the left for Thomas. Cuts it upfield. He's going to make one man miss. And he's going to fight toward the 20-yard line. He's got the first down. On third and 10, he gains 12. Braylon Thomas gets it in the red zone and add a few more yards as he's knocked down late after the play. Yeah, there was definitely a personal foul going to be added on. And that is around the 18-yard line. So they'll bring it down close to the 10-yard line as we have the distance. But more importantly, as Hank got to the edge, he came up to the middle and then worked himself outside and was able to go down the left sideline. This could be interesting to see how the, the officials handle this. There's definitely a personal foul at the end of the game, end of the play against Canavan. Waiting for the official. He's got to come across the field to make the signal. And they even give the number that Javier Nelson, not too pleased at the end of the play after Thomas had gotten back up, gave him a shove right back down. So half the distance puts it first and goal at the nine yard line. Matt Stanley will be in the gun. Tight end each way, three receivers in the formation. Pigeons, about 50 of them on defense as well. Stanley's gonna go left away from the Pigeons. In Towards the corner. A, he's got a huge line of blockers in front of him. And we're going to have a flag thrown into the pile. He's dragged at the five, and Tim says he saw a face mask. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. He reached out and grabbed and turned Stanley's head on the play. And that's going to give him another first down play. And that's going to bring him inside the five. Because they'll get the yardage, plus they'll add on half the distance again. And it'll still be first down like you mentioned. So right now it's a gain of three on the fifth carry of the oh, game. They're gonna take that back. They're going to call. Oh, I was with you. I thought I, I saw the head yeah. turn. So it's still a gain of three, but then a holding penalty will back Union back up to the 15s. First and goal from the 15-yard line now coming for the Scotties with 3.42 remaining in the first half. Again, we'll have all the first half stats and info when we come back on the Castle Asphalt Halftime Show. Thomas back to take the snap. Same play going to the left side of the design run. He's going to cut up field at the sideline and it's literally thrown out of bounds. And they're going to have another personal foul penalty against Bishop Canavan. Yeah, that was uh, Marshall that time defensively. Not sure he's the one that threw him away after the cross the end or the sideline. But needless to say, this is going to move the ball back inside the 10 here for Union. Well, you play till the whistle, Tim, but the last couple of plays, it's not playing to the whistle. It's well after the play is over. And this time, Thomas is well out of bounds. And part of it is, too, is that he's got a hold of him while he's inbounds. We lose the replay, but the play continues, and he keeps on throwing well after he has hit the sideline. Right. The whistles were there. Oh, they're actually saying he got a, the face mask even. So it's not even a late hit. It's that as he got the shoulder, someone else grabbed the face mask. Okay. So half the distance puts it to the six yard line. And it's first down again. <laughs> yeah. Strange last couple, two, three plays, but it's been first down each play. First down and goal, now back at the six yard line. So we went from the eight to the 15 to the six. Sun again comes out with three minutes remaining in the first half. And the Pigeons are gonna give us a break. Pigeons fly away because they see Matt Stanley in the Wildcat on first and goal. He's got two tight ends to the right. That's where he's going to look to run. He's going to try to get to the edge. Bounces outside, and it's going to be tripped up at about the 7, 8-yard line. He keeps his feet somehow, and he's actually still going forward, but now the whistle's uh, blow. <laughs> he actually got to the end zone. Yeah, Matt ran into the end zone before progress had been stopped. A loss of one yard. Matt's like, come on, let me go. Yeah, the mark of Matt the 7-yard line, but again, this is going to be interesting to see how Coach Knee handles this on second down and goal. A lot of things you can do here. I mean, obviously getting to the edge has been an important part of their success here tonight. I wouldn't mind seeing a kind of, well, I was gonna say a play action type scenario, but they're gonna have an em empty backfield instead. Empty set, two tight ends left. Thomas is gonna run that way on second and goal. He's gonna try to get to the outside. He's gonna get to the corner, but then he's gonna be met by a bunch in the secondary. Cross and Marshall read it the entire way. Good job by the Crusaders defense to string that out. With under two minutes to play in the first half, Union trying to extend this 8 nothing lead, but they're moving backwards. It's third and goal. Yeah, uh, again, good defense stringing it out. They've been going outside, outside, outside. It's time now to try to get something, maybe a draw here with Thomas or maybe a play action here on third down. Again, this Union offense is not necessarily dead on third down, so you just got to get positive yards to bring up a really more manageable fourth down. 
and we'll see how they do. Two receivers stacked left. Now a man coming in motion across the formation. That's Fisher. They're going to look back on the throwback. Open. Wide open. Caught it. No, he dropped, he dropped it. it. Keaton oh. Fisher was wide open. The throw was a little behind him in the end zone, and he's unable to make the adjustment and the catch. Oh, there was no one within 10 yards of him. The throw was just a little bit underthrown. Yeah, it was just a boot to the right where he stops and throws back. He made a nice throw, but Fisher couldn't adjust to the ball, and he was just all by himself. That's probably half the problem. Yeah, I'll tell you what, that's, concentration that's, that's, that's one that Caden wants back for sure because, yeah, it was a little low and behind him, but that's one that he will catch nine times out of ten, probably 99 out of 100. Now instead, it's going to be fourth down and goal from the 10. Thomas, buying time, rolling to his right, looking down the field. He's going to tuck. He's going to run. It's going to be a race to the pylon. He's in there. He dove inside the end zone. Oh, no. Oh. oh, no way. They marked him short. I want to see the replay on there this one. There is no way. Oh. There's oh. absolutely no way that he is out of bounds before the pylon. My goodness gracious. Let's see this. Replay or James. He had the race to the pylon. He dives and extends the football. This is where you want to see replay challenge in high school because he dives, he reaches forward. Oh, they took it off at the last second. They wouldn't show it all, but yeah, there's wow. no question he got there. There's no question in my mind he got to the pylon. Rob Natel's right there with the angle. We'll have it on our replay with minute 10 left. Now the ball's at literally the half yard line. Union is out of timeouts. Canavan just spent their last timeout of the first half. And there's only a minute 10 left here in the quarter. Turnover on downs at the half yard line. And I mean, where we are situated here too, Tim, we are in the end zone. Uh, we are about even with the uh, back line of the end zone. We got about as great a view as possible. And you could see that ball extended well before he ever is close to the sideline. That was amazing that the official called it that way. I don't know. That's one that you have to be having the official yeah. come back and say, no, he kept the feet in bounds when the yeah, ball's we extended. We were talking ahead Man. of time that they needed the potential in games like this to use a replay. <laughs> wow, it possibly should have been done. I mean, it's not obviously available, but that's something that the WPIL needs to look at going forward because that is just too close not to have it looked at again. So no timeouts, and now if Union can push two yards back, they can actually, or not even two yards, yeah. a half yard back gets them two points. I mean, you, as Canavan, this is going to be very difficult. They're going to probably do something quick up the middle, so you got to get some penetration here. And we're going to have a whistle. I, I think, think they're going to delay a game. See a snap infraction. Yeah, the linemen move the ball. Yeah. Push it back about three inches. Make it a little difficult. Yep. Yep. There it is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he basically <laughs> lifted the ball up and put it right back down. There is nowhere to move. The ball has to get completely out of the end zone, remember, on these as well. Minute 10 left. Kahneman will try to sneak it forward, and he will get enough. Trying to rip it out is Caden Fisher after he was unable to secure a touchdown catch on the last possession. About a two-yard pickup on first down for the quarterback. Yeah, they're just looking to run out the time with both teams out of, out of timeouts here. And if you're Canavan, you're going to be thrilled to go in at halftime only down one touchdown and a two-pointer. Mark it out to the three-yard line. Canavan will have to run one more play. And again, both teams are out of timeouts with less than 30 seconds remaining. Union still at the 8 nothing lead. It's going to be another quarterback sneak. Fisher again will make the tackle after about a three-yard pickup. But that will likely be the final play of this first half. Will Canavan try to rush out for one more, or will Coach Johnson and the staff go to the sideline? They will. Wow. Yeah, that will be the end of your first half. Wow. Ten seed break. Union leading Canavan 8 nothing, but it could be more. Uh, maybe a bit of a break for the top seeded Crusaders who will receive the second half kickoff. We'll take a break. Be back with the Castle Asphalt Halftime Show when we return. It's the Lawrence County Sports Net powered by LCAP. All championship games available only on the Trip Live High School Sports Network. Having a safe and healthy home is not something to play games with, especially if your home was built before 1978. You may be exposed to extremely harmful lead-based paint hazards. If you're concerned about lead in your home, don't roll the dice on your family's safety. LCAP's Healthy Homes Lead Hazard Reduction Program is here to help you win the battle. 
Your family's health and safety is the goal. Contact the Department of Healthy Homes today. I think the key to any attorney-client relationship is trust. My father told me a long time ago, the definition of personal integrity is really simple. Do what you say you're going to do. At LGKG, we've been doing that for over 80 years. Whether you're hosting a big party, it's family dinner night, or you just need a place to go and watch the big game, the Crane Room Grill is the place to be. Need that something special for your upcoming event? Ask about the CR Brewing Company's custom brewing options to give your big day that personalized touch that your guests will never forget. Visit craneroom.com to see their full menu or call in your takeout order now at 724-656-1553. The Crane Room Grill and CR Brewing Company, a winning combination. Works in Progress Painting wishes a successful and satisfying season to all Lawrence County sports teams and athletes. Work hard and bring honor to your team and how you play. Joe Wright and his family have been providing painting, window cleaning, and other property services for homeowners and businesses in the Lawrence County area for over 10 years. Their goal on every project is to provide a meaningful service that honors their customer, God, and their family, and to have fun while doing it. Works in Progress is now booking interior painting and related projects for the winter season. Call Joe today, 724-714-4294 to discuss your next project. Cold winds blowing, temperatures dropping, and snow is beginning to fall. And then your furnace goes out. LCAP's Lie Heat Crisis Program is here to help. If your furnace is blowing cold air, not turning on, or not reaching the desired temperature, help is right around the corner, whether it needs fixed or replaced. For information, call the Department of Healthy Homes at 724-656-0090. LCAP's Healthy Home Programs are the key to safer living. Don't get left out to dry. Call the Penn Ohio Bottled Water Company for the fastest and most efficient bottled water delivery service in the area. Penn Ohio offers bottled water ranging from 16.9 ounce bottles to five gallon jugs, perfect for your next event or office water cooler system. Also, don't forget to ask about their custom labeling options. Visit PennOhioBottledWater.com for more information and to get a quote on their delivery services. Whether it's at home, in the office, or on the sidelines, Penn Ohio has you covered. When the high school season heats up, make sure you have the best gear to support your school. Head to the Red Zone on Wilmington Road in the Shannon for all your county sporting apparel needs. From sporting goods to custom apparel to embroidery and more, the Red Zone has it all. Quality gear for all eight schools in the County of Champions. Stop by and enter the Red Zone or visit them online at theredzonesports.com. Score big at the Red Zone. In need of a lawyer, contact Medor Bonner Law, a boutique firm offering tailored legal services and over 120 years legal experience. County residents with strong family ties to the community, Jason Medor and Michael Bonner established Medor Bonner Law to provide clients with legal expertise and personal attention. Guided by their professional staff, you can feel confident your rights will be protected. Call attorneys Jason Medor or Michael Bonner or visit MedorBonnerLaw.com for more information. Wherever you're going, Axe can get you there. The bowling alley, beauty salon, and even the library. Axe can get you there safely. The grocery store, the pharmacy, and the bank. Axe can get you there comfortably. Going to work, visiting a friend, or just to relax at the park. Axe can get you there affordably. Axe is here to get you there safely, comfortably, and affordably. Choose Axe as your driving service and give us a call to schedule a ride. 8-0 Union leading at the halftime break over the top seed of Bishop Canterman Crusaders. We're giving you a little sound of the Union Scotty area marching band.
as we continue on our Castle Asphalt Halftime Show. Big shout out to the marching band under the direction of Devin Householder, giving us some songs from the Ladies of Rock, Elliot Laskuka, Joseph Durallo, your drum majors, Clara Hudson, the Scotty Girls captain, seniors out there on the field. Not able to march around, but they can do a concert formation to uh, play. And how about for the numbers? There's probably only, what, 15, 20 instrumentalists out there, Tim, and uh, they're giving us some big sound. They're playing in the opposite direction over there as well towards the Union Faithful. Yeah, you can see just how the sound radiates here in Exeter Stadium, and it's, they're doing a great job to entertaining the fans and uh, showing their their chops here on the field. Uh, like you said, they're in uh, concert formation, but hey, it's great to see the fans here. Part of the atmosphere here is the WPIL uh, championship, and that's the most important thing, is that you want just to have that, you know, recapture that high school feel in a huge stadium like this, and there's no doubt the bands bring that alive. All right, we're gonna bring you some fun stats here, so I'm gonna make sure Tweety Bird is ready, because these are gonna be fun. In the first half, Union runs a total they run a total of 36 plays, 65 passing yards, 74 rushing yards. That's 137 total in the first half. Bishop Canavan, four possessions as well, by the way. They run 12 plays, six yards passing. Oh, no, I, got, I missed one. Okay, 24 yards passing total. 24 yards passing on their 13 plays. And there's even more official numbers coming through. Thank you, Mr. Rossack. We'll, we'll see how good my numbers are, but the long and short of it is 36 plays versus just 13, so a three to one advantage, and the yards 137 to 30. Yeah, and it's the time of possession as we're Yeah, gonna, that's what I wanted that, to see. That's where it's gonna be huge to see the difference between these two uh, teams and what they able to do. I'm not sure if it's I see it here on the stats, top of my head. Uh, so here it is, 17 minutes and 22 seconds with the ball for the Union Scotties here tonight. That has just been phenomenal, and that's the key. We were talking about pregame, James, <coughs> about the Union defense getting in, making penetration, getting in and disrupting plays. And they got a sack early in the game. They can't even made a few mistakes on penalties that hurt them. They dropped the ball on a big play, and they had the turnover. And, and more importantly is just the way this defense is, has really raised to the occasion in the first half of this ball game and limit that Canavan offense from really finding any rhythm here tonight. And just the opposite side for Union. Union the offense has done exactly what they wanted to do. Show a few wrinkles, also be able to run their bread and butter and get things done, control this game, and really take five six seven minutes every possession and take the, you know take the clock out of the game Braylon Thomas with 46 passing yards or 46 rushing yards excuse me and a touchdown throwing the ball six of 12 for 67 yards uh, on the day two receptions each for Matt Stanley and Maddox Thompson uh, again a total of 132 yards of offense versus just 23 yards of offense for Canavan uh, but eight nothing to score and we got a chance to look again at a, at a replay and a, a still shot and uh, I mean, th there's very little question from uh, from the angles that we've seen that Union was probably robbed of an extra six or eight points there at the end of the first half. But uh, as you're in the locker room, if you're Coach Dean and the staff, you got to be telling your team, like, look, yeah, I mean, we probably should be up more, probably should have caught the pass on the previous play uh, that hopefully uh, Caden Fisher will have a chance to make up for that later in the game. But you're up 8 up, and you need to come out and play your game again in the second half. Kahneman's going to get the ball first. If you can get a good stop right away, uh, you could have a very interesting uh, scenario coming on because you have a double-digit C that's never happened in 1A football, even making it here, nevertheless leading at the halftime break. Yeah, it's a history moments that are upon us, and we'll see exactly what transpired here in the second half. But for Union, what they've done defensively is control the line of scrimmage, and more importantly, they've controlled the field position. And that's gonna be key here in the second half. Obviously, as you mentioned, Canavan gets the ball first. So this opening second half kickoff is gonna be huge and try to pin them you know, inside the 30 and then work their way from there and see if you can get that field position and continue to play on their side of the 50 the entire second half, like you basically did here in the first half. And that is gonna be key. But another key for Union going forward is 
as w much as we all believe that they were robbed of a second touchdown here in late in the second quarter, you have to have a short memory and move on. They're gonna have to extend this lead. Put the pressure on Canavan to be down multiple scores. They're down eight, which is fantastic. But they need to be down more and keep that pressure on them where they can't necessarily get into what they love to do first. They have to think of that. What, how are we gonna attack them first versus get back into the game? So that's gonna be really, I think, really important for them going forward here. Eight nothing, Union leading over Bishop Canavan at the halftime break. We're gonna step aside one more time here on our Castle Asphalt Halftime Show. They know the importance of making a good first impression and no matter how elegant your home or office may be, matching it with poor road surfaces can make your friends or potential clients regret making the trip. Get a free estimate at castleasphalt.com. The entire Union Township area, they're not regretting the trip so far. Union with an 8-0 lead at the break here from Akershire Stadium. Don't go anywhere. Second half, when we return here on the Lawrence County Sportsnet, powered by LCAP. Paving or construction service at Castle Asphalt begins with a thorough site inspection of the area to allow their team of professionals to become familiar with the unique conditions of your home or business. Once the site inspection is complete, Castle Asphalt provides you with a detailed plan of the design, cost, materials, and time of completion so you know exactly what to expect during your construction. Visit castleasphalt.com to request a quote for your next project and make your dream design come to fruition. For a unique way to expand your business? Advertise on the Lawrence County Sportsnet and be seen by thousands of viewers in the area and around the country on over 100 broadcasts each year. Visit lcsportsnet.com and click Advertise with LCSN. In workers' compensation, my clients are oftentimes not receiving their wage loss. They're not receiving their medical expenses. In LGKG, they come to us so that we can put them in a position to pay their bills. If we're keeping our promises, our clients are getting the justice they deserve. When you're looking for quality concrete services, contact the experienced professionals at Doran Concrete. Our company is family, locally owned and operated, and has been serving the community for over 30 years. Get residential or commercial concrete services for any size job. Our skilled professionals offer prompt and reliable services at an affordable price. We believe in the principles of honesty, integrity, and reliability. Get in touch with us for exceptional concrete services at prices that you can afford. Joseph's Marketplace is Newcastle's favorite family-owned hometown grocery store and coffee shop. Fresh meats and produce, whole-line deli, homemade foods, and much more. Joseph's Marketplace has hot foods prepared every day. They also have Newcastle favorites like grape leaves, hummus, and wedding soup available daily. Follow Joseph's Marketplace on Facebook and Instagram for daily updates or stop in to see what's cooking each day. Come hang out at the brand new cafe and bakery full of great coffee, drinks, sandwiches, snacks, sweets, and free Wi-Fi. In a rush? Go to josephsnc.com and place your cafe order online. Joseph's Marketplace, family owned and operated since 1915. Looking to buy, sell, or rent in Lawrence County? Get Realtor Michael Kirkwood Jr. in your starting lineup today. Michael Kirkwood Jr. of Castle Realty caters to buyers, sellers, and renters of Lawrence County and the surrounding areas. Call Michael Kirkwood Jr. at 724-301-1482 today. Check out his current listing or list your home at castle-realty.com. People you know, people you trust. DNR Lawn Care can take care of all of your landscaping and grass cutting needs. They are fully insured, accept just about any payment method, and have nearly 20 years of experience in the lawn maintenance business. Call DNR Lawn Care today to schedule an estimate or send them a message on Facebook. DNR Lawn Care, have your lawn done right. Are you looking to make a difference? Well, here is your opportunity. Lawrence County Child and Youth Services is looking for compassionate foster parents now. If you are over the age of 21, in good health, and wanting to help a child in need, we're in need of you. 
Receive free training and compensation by becoming a foster parent. Call 724-658-2558 and let Bill, Brooklyn, and Heather get you started. Make a difference and become a foster parent today. Looking for a unique way to expand your business? Advertise on the Lawrence County Sportsnet and be seen by thousands of viewers in the area and around the country on over 100 broadcasts each year. Visit lcsportsnet.com and click Advertise with LCSN. Trib Live has a little something for everyone. Sports from high school to the pros. News from across the street and around the world. Arts and entertainment. Lifestyles. Opinion. Weather. Photo galleries. Video. You can even find your next job, house, and car. So look alive, Pittsburgh, and get the news you want and information you need all in one place. TribLive.com. TribLive.com. News and more 24-7. Second half action coming your way. Just a few minutes time in the Class 1A Championship football action for 2022. The 10-seed Union Scotties leading 8-0 over the top-seeded Bishop Canavan Crusaders. Glad you can be with us at lcsportsnet.com and on the Trip Live High School Sports Network. Before we go on, need to say right there, you just heard the voice of Sir Don Rebel, the uh, leader of the uh, broadcasting end of the Trib Live High School Sports Network. We wish him uh, good health and best of luck. He had a, a major surgery earlier this week. I know it's killing him that he is not here to be able to uh, enjoy the, I almost said it, not Heinz Field anymore, the Akershire Stadium festivities for the uh, football championships. He's normally the voice on the PA system uh, for these games. Don, we, uh, we miss you. We wish you best of, uh, of health, best of luck uh, in your recovery. And uh, I think his recovery time is supposed to be January or February, so that means um, we'll see in about two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah basketball season is just around the corner. He'll be ready. Uh, how about that? It's just one week away, actually, from today is when you're going to have the, uh, the tip-off tournaments beginning. And uh, many players on this union squad uh, – well, they've not been at practice all week. Coach Mark Stanley has had uh, he's had to be a little bit creative in those practices because you have uh, most of the starters from last year's team are part of this team, including his uh, two twin seniors, Matt and Mark, uh, out there. Caden Fisher as well, one of the uh, returning starters from a year ago. There's um, lots of players. Brennan Porter was a part of that team. Lots who were on the uh, baseball championship team, including Mark and Brennan. Uh, the Maddox Thompson, we've called his name a lot. He's been out there uh, with all of that. Um, the, the three-sport athlete stuff is absolutely incredible to see, uh, Tim, and it's come to fruition that, you know, you, when you get a, a great group that works hard and is able to do this sort of thing, uh, it carries over from one sport to the next, and with the success here for Union in the 22, uh, 2022 season, you got to say that it has to be one of the best all around that you've ever seen. It really is. They've really achieved a lot and set the goals high for this school uh, going forward and that's great to see and that's exactly what you want uh, to be competitive and have a chance to play for championships and this these kids this senior class this these classes that are around them have done that this in the last two years and uh, we're seeing the fruition of it here tonight on the football or today on the football field I should say <laughs> and it has been a lot of fun watching them grow we've, we've seen them on the basketball court you know, last season, and we've seen them on the baseball field this past year, and now we're seeing them succeed on the football field. It has just been a, a really a lot of joy <laughs> watching this Union Athletic program uh, just continue to take strides forward. Of the 26 on the roster, eight of them are three sport athletes, so now playing in their third championship game in the last eight months, and another seven are two sport athletes that are uh, playing for their second chance at a WPIAL title. It was silver in hoops uh, against Bishop Kahneman uh, back in March. It was gold against Eden in the championship on the baseball diamond. As we look again at the replay uh, on the Trib Live High School yeah. Sports Network, and uh, I, I was told during the halftime break that there were collective groans all the way across the press box uh, when they marked them down because uh, everybody the whole way down, and we can see the perfect view of it, you saw hands going up everywhere. Uh, the only person, the yeah, the only person who didn't put their arms up was the man in stripes right there at the pylon. Yeah, he saw the something differently. The most, exactly. Yep. So unfortunately for the Scotties, it is only an eight nothing lead, not a 
uh, 14 or 16 nothing lead for the Scotties as they get ready to start the second half. This first drive, I think, is going to be really crucial, Tim, because it's going to be Canavan getting possession to begin the second half. They only ran 13 plays on offense the entire first half. You need to go and and make a big stop right away on the defensive end. And it starts with special teams on this kickoff. They have to really control this kickoff, know where they're going to put the ball, and if they're kicking deep or if they're kicking to an area to have their players there to make the play and then bring on the defense to do their job, which they have done successfully here uh, in the first half. They've been really able to get into the backfield and disrupt plays, and that has been key here tonight for the Scotties, and they're going to have to continue to do that here in the second half. It's going to be really important for them to be able to reach the quarterback and cross and chase him down. They had one sack in the first half. They're going to need a little bit more penetration and they really control Carter. He's not been a factor in this ball game at all at the running back. So there that is going to be key. More three and outs or limit they've only had one first down in the first half. So that's really I think going to be big part of the success here in the second half. See how Canavan made some adjustments and how you're going to have to adjust on the fly to what Canavan will choose to try to do here in the second half. And we thank our friends at the Trib Live High School Sports Network providing the great video coverage. We hope you're listening along. If not to them, listen along to us. We thank Kyle. We thank Ty. Uh, they've been getting lots of great info on our Scotties. We appreciate all their work. And uh, get used to Ty's voice because you might be hearing him actually coming up for the eSports tournament coming up at Union here in a few weeks' time. It was ah. supposed to be earlier this week, but naturally there were, some, there were some more uh, pressing matters going on across the, the land of the Scotties. So uh, we will have that for you coming up. Uh, officially, I believe the date is now December 17th. Don't quote me on that one, but we'll have that for you at Union High School. What we have here is another pigeon infestation, and we have second half kickoff. From Akershire Stadium, it's going to be taken by a deep man on a couple bounces at about the 25-yard line. That's Lax trying to shake and bake, gets away from Matt Stanley, gets down to the corner for Grayson Blakely. Now tries to cut back up the field, and it will get close to the 40-yard line. So decent starting field position coming for the Canavan Crusaders, who in the first half, again, only ran 13 total plays. Uh, and they'll have a, a start, and we will say, at the 39-yard line after the Thompson tackle. Yeah, it's going to be up to this defense to continue what it was able to do in the first half, and that is get penetration and disrupt plays early and really limit the the passing and the running game here of the Crusaders. And interestingly enough, your 1,000-yard running back in Marquise Carter, he only had two carries, and one of them was credited for the fumble exchange. And it's going to be Cole Oshevsky who's going to be the quarterback. The sophomore is going to throw to Xavier Nelson. Good play call. He's going to get a short gain. He's going to turn it into a big gain across midfield. Breaks two tackles and steps out of bounds on about the 35-yard line of Union. So a huge gain of about 25 yards into Scotty territory just like that. Yeah, they played off defensive backs. Were about 10, 15 yards back. And Canavan threw out wide and took advantage of that and got a one-on-one. -on -one. Mark, uh, Matt Stanley was there finally to uh, drag him down out of bounds around the 35-yard line. First catch for Nelson goes for 26 yards. Olszewski with his first pass attempt. He's going to look to throw again on first and 10. He's going to scramble to his left, and he's got a lot of open field in front of him. Not as much of the runner, but he makes a man miss, and finally dragging him down is the linebacker Porter, who was in spy, and it's going to work for a 10-yard gain. And it takes two plays. Canavan has as many first downs in the second half as they did the entire first half. Yeah, and that's the key here. No, they don't. No. It's coming back. They got a holding penalty. There is a flag back at the 43-yard line. Yeah, exactly. This is going to push them way back. And that was one of those plays that was designed to go to the right side. And Ofeski took the... And it was the holding penalty. And what happened was... The play was going to the right side, so everyone was going that way. He flew back left side, was able to make that big gain, but it was all for naught. Fifth penalty now against the Crusaders, only two in the first half against Union, and that does move it all the way back to the other side of the field, so that's an yeah. eight-yard loss and then the 10-yard holding penalty. Trips right on first and 28, first drive of the second half for Canavan. Mitchell gets around the edge. He's chasing Olszewski from behind. He's going to dive and make the sack. Right at the line of scrimmage, Jamel Mitchell, I've laughed. I've called him, nah, he's not as fast as he thinks. What a quick move that one uh, was. I'll tell you what, that is getting in from the left side. 
of, of the line there by Mitchell and is chasing him down, not giving up on the play and making it on the right side of the thing. Look at him run him down. He ducked right under Justin Lashley, the, uh, the right tackle, got right under the block and then chased him down, showing off the speed. He's got a block punt return for a touchdown and a pick six earlier in the year, but that's a big sack right there. Uh, loss of about a half yard, so it will go officially as a sack. Second down and 28 yards coming up for Kahneman. Ball on the left hash. They got three seconds on the play clock. I think they're going to have to burn a timeout. Actually, they might not. They might just take the penalty. And there goes the penalty. Probably not a bad idea when it's already second down and 28. Yeah. What's the difference between second down and 28 versus second down and 33? Yeah. He's got a long way to go no matter what the case may be. We're talking about the speed of linebacker or actually of uh, Jamel Mitchell. He's a sophomore, 6'2", 200 pounds. I mean, he's a big kid getting down that line, mm -hmm. defensively chasing down that quarterback. And you'll tell you what, he was a running back receiver as a freshman who moved to the offensive line throughout the course of the year out of necessity last year. Now it's becoming his homestead. Jet sweep action. This is going to be a double pass, trying to throw it down the field. This is Cross, the quarterback, who got the ball as the receiver, and then the pass down the field, and Gunn comes over and knocks it away from the intended target. That was Barian, I believe, going down the near sideline. Yeah, it was a great play there. I think Nelson was there uh, for the reception and yeah. potential. But needless to say, it was great defense there by Gunn and Jonke as it was Gunn that came in and knocked that ball away as he was tiptoeing the sideline. If that's the pros, you're probably going to get a call for face guarding because no one ever made a play on the ball, at least Jonke didn't. But he did a good job of just keeping the arms up, ushering the receiver towards the sideline, and then Gunn playing free safety, playing center field, going the entire length of the field to knock it away. Forcing a third down and 32 to go. Union Faithful getting loud. Jets or a uh, bubble screen to the near sideline for Xavier Nelson. He's going to be knocked out of bounds blocks. at the 45 yard line. Everybody saw the holding there. And I'll tell you what, if you're Union, do you back him up another 10 yards, make him do it again? I think you do. It all depends on where the plays and where the flag was going to be. I, I'll be honest with you, I just take the ball. I, I try to make him punt. So right now it's a gain of about 12 yards to the third or to the 44 yard line of Union. The flag would be back at the 45, would push him basically right back to make him do the exact same play, third and 31 maybe. I don't know. This is this is interesting. I can see it going either way because obviously Kahneman can break I it at any moment. Th I think I got to decline this one. They're gonna take it. Nope. They do decline it. I, I would want the ball if I was Union because we've been so successful running the ball, mm -hmm. controlling the time of this game. Uh, you want to have this a short game and with the, the lead. So, got to pay attention here to see what they do here. Uh, where they're at, you got to watch for a fake. And it is Xavier Nelson who normally is the punter. But I don't think that's him booting it away. No, it's not. It's going to be an end over end kick taken by Gunn at the 12 yard line. He's got some room up the far sideline, cuts inside at the hash. He gets out to the 30 to the 31 yard line. Good return, too, to give Union a pretty decent starting field position for their first drive of the second half. 9.43 remaining in the third quarter and an 8 0 Scotty's lead. Yeah, Gunn did a great job on that return. Took it north and south once he got the ball and grabbed it around the 15 and returned it across the 30 for about a 16 yard return. But Braylon Thomas will bring his team out on the field. 16 carries for 46 yards and a touchdown. 63 yards in the air as well for the junior quarterback. The Scotties outgained Bishop Canavan 137 to 30 in the first half unofficially. Again, you just want to get positive yards on first down and get that clock moving. Right up the middle, not a lot of room here on first down. Canavan gets dragged backwards, or drags the carrier backwards after about a one or two yard gain. And Collins on the stop there for the Crusaders, really keen on Thomas there as the runner. And he gets about a yard on the carry. And they're trying to rip the ball out after the play. We were talking uh, during the halftime break with a couple of our cameramen down there, Rob Nattel saying there's a lot of chat between the officials and players uh, after the plays and during the plays of, you, of let him go, let him go, let him go. Uh, make sure that the play ends when it's supposed to. So you like that communication between official and player. On second and nine, another design run for Thomas. He's got a hole at the middle. He's got a first down. Past the 40, out to the 46-yard line. The hole closed quickly, but he didn't need much of it. Man, that explosion. We saw it on the long touchdown run last week, Tim. 
That and then right there, he plants the foot and boom, he's gone. He does. He only takes about one step and he's at full speed. And Braylon Thomas, and what he did is he let his blocks just get that little wedge and he went right through it and, and in the process gets that first down run. We saw that a lot with the Laurel blocking over the course of the year, getting that little wedge in the Mack truck size hole. Not quite as big here, but effective nonetheless, as Stanley will take a first down Wildcat snap, and he's going to be stuffed right at the line of scrimmage for no gain. Maybe even a loss of a yard on Stanley's first carry of the second half. Seven carries for nine yards for Stanley. So right now, Thomas, 19 carries for 70 yards unofficially. The rest of the team for Union, just 21 yards on 10 carries. Yeah, it's uh, gonna be a slugfest in the, for the offensive line, and they're gonna have to control the balls, but this is what Union wants to do. They wanna run, they wanna get to the edges. It's gonna be empty backfield. We'll see if they throw here on second down and long, but I won't be surprised if they just keep it in the hands of the quarterback. It will be. Thomas trying to get to the right edge. He's gonna break one tackle and then tripped up nicely, coming up from the safety position. Believe that was cross, and that's you know exactly why uh, he's a, a now a Penn State recruit, uh, been offered officially. So third down and long coming up here for Coach Nee. It's going to be interesting to see how they choose to make a, a, a decision here. Obviously, running the ball keeps that clock running. We're down under seven minutes, 30 seconds here to play in the third quarter. That's a big part of this game is controlling the line of scrimmage and controlling field position. So you can run the ball here. Even if you have to punt on fourth down, you're doing exactly what you want to do. It'll be third down and seven as Thomas gets the snap and came early. Yeah, no, I don't think anybody was ready for it. Now scrambling around, he's going to throw it to the flat as the blocker now becomes receiver. Mark Stanley stiff arms the man and he's got the first down. Every time Mark Stanley gets the ball in his hands, he has the mad truck mentality that nothing's going to stop him. And he goes down the right sidelines, right to the sticks for that first down run after the catch. Needed eight, and he got exactly eight. He had two catches all year. He's got two today in the most important game of the year, and a huge third down conversion. Scotty's unofficially three of seven on third downs. Tick, 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 we're down to 645. Union again just controlling the clock, Tim. That is so important here for the Scotty. They gotta continue that mentality. Every play just keep moving forward, keeping that clock running. Matt Stanley Wildcat looks outside, cuts inside, maybe one or two as the rugby scrum continues. He'll get, well, give him a gain of one on his eighth carry. And again, you, you wait for what kind of wrinkle they might still have up their sleeves when Matt Stanley takes a Wildcat snap. Obviously, you're going to look, you know, maybe if anything, you see him hand the ball off again. They did it that one time and had Thomas stay on the field as a wideout, came back and threw the ball. But more importantly, maybe we'll just get a little quick pitch or a, uh, a pass there from one of the Wildcat uh, quarterbacks. We still haven't seen much of Mike Gunn getting runs here in the playoffs either. Quick pass to the far sideline, caught by Jonky at about the 38-yard line, ushered out of bounds. That's a great pitch and catch of about six, seven yards, makes us third down and very manageable, but Jonky looks like he's coming up a little bit lame at the end of the play. Yeah, nice play there by Jonky growing outside against Lindsey as he was able to catch that ball and, and advance. It brings up a fourth down and manageable. Ball at the 39-yard line. Interesting thing, you can actually do kind of like a quick kick, if, or third down, excuse me, yeah. look at the stick, they had it fourth down, but they changed it now, it's third down. So, in the end, you got a lot of opportunities here. We'll see, just kind of keep it in uh, Thomas's hand and see if he can do it like an RPO here. Eighth play of the drive, down to 547 remaining. It's gonna be a run for Thomas, he goes to the right end, breaks off one tackle, he's oh. off to the races, to the 30, you're not gonna get him! Union! Doubles their advantage, 14 nothing Scotties. A 39 yard touchdown run for Braylon Thomas. The 10 seed Cinderella story. It's not midnight yet folks. And it's not gonna be ringing anytime soon. Huge two pointer coming up here for the Art Cunningham conversion here for Union. They're up 14, they would love to extend this with two more points, but on Thomas's run, just great timing and explosion once he got into the defensive backs. There was nothing in front of him other than the goal line. Nine play scoring drive. They'll do the conversion from the left hand side with 540 remaining in the third quarter. Well now 
think we may get a timeout. Yeah, I'm not sure. I haven't seen a signal. But they're going to bring the teams to the sideline. So it looks like maybe Union has called a Pontius Insurance timeout. I haven't seen a, a call from either official, official yeah. but how about that? A couple of third down conversions on the drive. You've now had scoring drives of 11 plays, a 13 player that didn't score, a nine pl or an eight play drive that looked like it did score at the end of the first half, but was called short, and now a nine, or excuse me, an eight play scoring drive this time with Braylon Thomas. Again, he doesn't need much room. He breaks out of one tackle in the backfield, Tim. Boom, he's gone. Yeah, he takes maybe one or two steps. He's at full speed. And he just follows his block so well. Makes that quick cut back to his left on that touchdown run of 39 yards. And once he did that, it was just goal line in front of him. And we've seen him do that multiple times this year. Uh, not just during this playoff run, but during the entire season. Such a dynamic runner when he has the ball in his hands. A great decision maker. And a guy who has great vision throughout uh, the field. Both as a passer and a runner. Got Bruce Fry next to us with our friends from WBVP. He's about as excited as the rest of us over here. We're seeing potential history right now as Union, the 10 seed, never has a double-digit seed. They've made it here to the championship game, and they're leading 14-0. The R. Cunningham conversion still to come. Gun is to the right of Thomas, who's in the gun. They're going to throw it to him in the flat, caught at the five, breaks away from one, breaks away from another, but he's not going to get enough to get into the end zone. The conversion fails, but it's still a 14-0 lead for the Union Scotties. A little altercation after the play, and Union's trying to get their players to the, the sideline, and look like Thomas is actually tied up with one of the Canvan players. Cooler heads prevail, but it's excitement on the Scotty sideline. A 14-0 advantage midway through the third quarter. Don't go anywhere, folks. The Class 1A championship game It's right here at lcsportsnet.com. For 20 years, Mele Chiropractic has treated athletes of all ages to help them get safely back to the top of their game. Mele Chiropractic has three full-time doctors in their office, and all three are former area athletes who have had to battle injuries throughout their careers. They want to help you get safely back on your feet. But more importantly, help stop the injuries before they happen. Prehab before you rehab. Attention all high school student athletes. During your sports season, a $25 visit to the Mele Chiropractic office includes an adjustment and or all therapies necessary. From the athletes of tomorrow to the weekend warriors and everything in between, let Mele Chiropractic keep you in the game. Keeping you in the game thanks to Mele Chiropractic. And thanks to third down conversions, keeping the Scotties in the game. Braylon Thomas, his second touchdown run. He now kicks it off, taking it to the 25-yard line, trying to come to the near sideline. Is the return man. He's able to get to the edge. We're going to have another flag. And the return from Jaden Lindsay is going to go for naught because Elijah Booker got held up pretty heavily on the end. Penalties are starting to really hurt this uh, Bishop Canavan team, Tim. Yeah, they're getting frustrated. They're not used to being playing from behind and a team dominating them defensively. And this is something they haven't really experienced all season being 12 and 1 7 and 0 in their conference it's just not something they have been challenged with too much this season this union scotty team is a little bit in their heads which is a good yeah. thing here in the third quarter so interestingly enough both these teams in week zero played against other teams who are in the class 1a state championship still we're down to the elite eight in the state championship skilton high spire steel high beat bishop canavan week zero 21 to 14. Union lost to Canton, 31-18. Both those teams are playing in games either tonight or tomorrow. Both of them are tomorrow, in fact. Winner of this one takes on either Reynolds or Port Allegheny. That's a game going on tonight. Handoff, Xavier Nelson, only his third carry of the game. Ball's loose! Matt Staley's got it! Matt Staley's off to the races! He ripped it away, and he's in for the Union touchdown! What a play by Max Stanley. Seen the ball on the ground, scooped it up, moved to his right, went into the end zone to extend the lead out to 20 and three scores here in the third quarter with 523 here remaining in the third quarter. Huge, huge play. Watch this again. Olszewski is the quarterback. He hands it off to the back. Carter and Matt, we saw this a couple times against Burgestown. He just <laughs> rips it right out. Yes, just stripped it right out. He didn't even scoop it up. He scooped it out of the belly 
of Carter and then just ran right into the end zone for the touchdown. As we mentioned earlier, Canavan has been trying to strip the ball all day long here from Union. Union was able to strip it there for their second turnover and get into the end zone. Protect your possessions with Medor Bonner Law. The Medor Bonner Law change in possession. Thanks to Matt Stanley. Quarterback draw for the conversion. Thomas tries to break outside. He's not going to be able to get there. He's still loose. And finally a player jumps on his back and drags him down at the 10-yard line. So the score is 20 to 0 after Matt Stanley. That's not a scooping score. That's a ripping score. Ripped it away. Just 17 seconds apart, your two Union touchdowns. Don't go anywhere. Union up 20 nothing right here on the Lawrence County Sports Net, powered by LCAP and on the Trip Live High School Sports Network. Don't get left out to dry. <laughs> They're all out of order. Ohio Bottled Water Company for the fastest and most efficient bottled water delivery service in the area. Penn Ohio offers bottled water ranging from 16.9 ounce bottles to five gallon jugs, perfect for your next event or office water cooler system. Also, don't forget to ask about their custom labeling options. Visit PennOhioBottledWater.com for more information and to get a quote on their delivery services. Whether it's at home, in the office, or on the sidelines, Penn Ohio has you covered. We'll have to get you an official tally on the length of that fumble return for a touchdown. We're going to approximate it at about 30 yards uh, until we get the more official number. But Union with Matt Stanley's stealer play, literally stealing it away from the defense or from offense to defense, extends the Union lead. Still lots of time, though, a quarter and a half to play. Union with a 20 nothing advantage. Squib kick will be taken to about the 44-yard line. That's where Canavan will take over, and now they need to have the short-term memory, Tim. They really do, but more importantly, let's talk about this Union defense that's come to play here tonight. They have just controlled the, the line of scrimmage throughout the ball game, and they've not, they've not given Canavan an opportunity to get any type of rhythm here tonight, and they've been opti optimistic and optimistic at getting the ball. So that's the most important thing is they've done everything they had to do to give themselves this opportunity to be up 20 nothing here in the third quarter. Koloshevsky has played the second half <coughs> for most of this game, or as he's played all the second half, though we have seen Jason Cross as a receiver turn quarterback. They're going to pitch it to Carter. He's going to get to the midfield, maybe another yard to the 49-yard line, and I like that. Give it to your 1,000-yard back. He, he is, uh, me messed up on a handoff that was miscommunication earlier. He fumbled on that last play. You got to trust your junior running back. He's done stuff for you all year. I like that for uh, Canavan, giving yeah, it back to him. You do have to get it right back to get that confidence level up. Yeah, but that's anytime they're running the ball, that's, that's a win here for Union to keep that ball, the clock running. Yeah, you're right, starting to run out of time. And we're going to have a sack in the backfield, meeting at the quarterback. Union gets the sack. Antonio Perez and company in there for the loss back to the 45 yard line. Second and two just turned into third and 10. Yeah, it was huge again. They've been getting penetration the entire game and that's the key. They really disrupt this Canavan's offense from ever getting any type of rhythm and function. And that is another huge sack here by the Scotties. Third down. Call it nine to go from now on Canavan's 45 yard line. Union up 20 nothing and about back it up more. Movement up front against the Crusaders will make this third down and 14. Another penalty against the Crusaders that have really another factor here tonight. They have not been able to really get any rhythm in this ball game. Every time they get a step forward, they take two steps back and it's been this Scotty defense that has really been the turning point here in tonight's ball game and this is a huge third down again got to keep the play in front of them they're going to be a four down territory because of the score and i think union just gave five yards right back after a sack you want to get another one but uh this time moving a little bit too quickly so yeah. after a five yard false start a five yard offside it's only the third penalty against union today and there was just a hard count nice play there by Ocheski making advantage using a hard cat getting both ends to draw off sides on that play but again third down and long got to keep the ball the play in front of you and play this in front of the sticks 
and bring up fourth down. They're going to be a four down territory because of the score from this point on. Yeah, you're probably right. Third down and nine, a defense chance, ringing laugh on the far side of the field. Mitchell gets around the edge, chasing Olszewski from behind, throwing across his body, and it's going to be intercepted! Mike Gunn with the pick at the 40 yard line, and he's gone! You're not going to get him! Mike Gunn read that perfectly, cut right in front of the receiver, and took it down the left sideline right in front of the Kinnaman bench and took it into the score for the second defensive touchdown. This game has been nothing but impressive what this defense has done. It has been a bend don't break defense the entire playoffs. Today it's been shut down. You're looking down press row up here. There are jaws that are dropped. We can't believe what is being seen here at Akershire Stadium. 3.15 remaining in the third quarter. Union now leads 26 to nothing over top seeded Bishop Canavan. I think Union just took another Pontius Insurance timeout to try to calm the troops because every conversion at this point is gonna be really big as well. Mike Gunn with a 60 yard pick six Union with a pair of defensive touchdowns in the last two minutes and eight seconds. It's amazing. 3.15 remaining here in the third quarter and two defensive scores here for the Scotties. What an impressive play here by Mike Gunn as he read the eyes of the quarterback the entire way. And Credit Mitchell first for the, for the yes. rush. He threw across his body and that's when he just steps right in front of him and <laughs> takes it down the sidelines. I mean, it was a beautiful read there by Mike Gunn, but you're right. Again, it was about getting penetration and disrupting the play, and that has been key here tonight. What the Scotties have done defensively, almost every play, they've been in the backfield, and Canavan has not had an opportunity to make any adjustments to that. Mitchell again gets off the edge quickly, and that's a play you can probably make in the regular season. You see, let's say, Sacks open down the field. You throw it across your body, but you don't necessarily see the speed and the awareness of a Mike Gunn playing safety like that all year long. Gunn, how about high pointing the ball too? And then at that point, you're not catching the speedster. No. So now for the conversion. Gunn stands to the left of Thomas, ball on the left hash, trying to make it 28 nothing Union. Thomas will get the snap, he's looking to throw. Rolling out now to his right, looking down the field. No one there, he's gonna throw it towards the back pylon and not able to get there in time was Maddox Thompson. Conversion no good, but it's Union 26, Canavan nothing. Back in a moment, the Class 1A Championship. You're listening to it here at lcsportsnet.com and the Trip Live High School Sports Network. When it comes to protecting those you love, the businesses you've built, or the things you've earned, you need someone you can trust. Who better to protect your interests than a local insurance agent? Pontius Insurance is a team of local agents helping local residents in Lawrence County and surrounding areas, specializing in auto, home, business, and life insurance. Come see Dan Pontius, Jessica Wyland, Tracy Giddings, and the rest of the team at Pontius Insurance and receive the personalized service you deserve. At our Cunningham Funeral Home and Crematory, we provide quality, cost-efficient pavement-related services to Western Pennsylvania. Every paving or construction service at Castle Asphalt begins with a thorough site inspection of the area to allow their team of professionals to become familiar with the unique conditions of your home or business. Once the site inspection is complete, Castle Asphalt provides you with a detailed plan of the design, cost, materials, and time of completion so you know exactly what to expect during your construction. Visit castleasphalt.com to request a quote for your next project and make your dream design come to fruition. Turn coming out for Canavan, and they got some room on the near sideline, breaking out towards the 40-yard line. Stanley ripped it away again at the last second from Xavier Nelson, but it goes out of bounds. A huge return, though, for Canavan. They are all the way down to the 33-yard line of Union to begin this drive. Yeah, they their blocking is set up to the right side of the field, and Union has been kicking to the left side, making them come all the way back. That time, Nelson was able to find a crease and able to come across field and up to the edges to, to return it to the 33 yard line. So great field position here for Canavan. Yeah, first time they've started in plus territory and the first time they've gotten to the edge without the assistance 
of a holding call. Lax will get the handoff on the jet sweep going from the near side to the far. It's strung out beautifully by Perez and then company comes. This is gonna be a loss of four yards on the handoff. Yeah, it looked like it was developed well as and then on the edge, they controlled it. This defense has done such a terrific job getting into the backfield and controlling the edges and really taking that away here from Canavan. The only time they've been successful is when they've done a quick quick passes out to the receiver where they get some one-on-one and some yardage in front of the defensive back. Uh, right now they're trying to get a splash play because that's what they need, trailing 26-0 to Union with 2.30 remaining in the third quarter. Olszewski, play action, looking down the field, no one there. Now rolling out to his left, he's got some room, he's gonna tuck and run, he'll be ushered out of bounds after about a two yard pickup. Elijah Booker there with Matt Stanley to usher him to the sideline. Yeah, both of them were there making the play holding that edge as he rolled back out to his left. They were able to come right with him and prevent him to really make it more than a yard gain on him, bring up a third down and long. Unofficially, I have Bishop Canavan for eight rushing yards on the day. It's been an amazing effort here by the Scotties defense. And again, it is the guys up front. That front seven has done a great job. That front four has done a phenomenal job getting into the backfield and the linebackers filling the void and really getting there and making the plays. Three seconds on the play clock. Will Canavan get the snap off in time? They do not. Five yards back, it'll be third down and 17 after the delay a game penalty, the eighth penalty flag against the Bishop Canavan Crusaders. They're just discombobulated. They don't know what's going on. They, they've just never been in this situation all season where a defense has really controlled the outcome of a ball game. They're used to be able to do what they want to a defense, not the defense doing something to them. Ball at the 40-yard line. Here's the snap for third down and long. Blitz coming. Stanley gets to him right as the ball is thrown, and the ball is going to be caught and then dropped because Dane Junkie with a huge hit on the receiver, Lassay Lax, and Koloszewski took one under the ribs on the stick from Stanley. Didn't see that uh, coming much, but Porter and Stanley came flying in. Actually, I'm sorry, Porter on the hit on the quarterback. Yeah, Porter on the hit on the quarterback and Junkie on the hit of the receiver when he hit the ball to knock it loose and not making that reception. Great, again, defense, but it starts with that pressure up front. I keep talking about it because it's been so impressive here tonight. They've gotten to the quarterback so often, blowing up plays. Pontius Insurance timeout taken by Bishop Canavan with 120 remaining in the third quarter. Fourth down coming. It'll be fourth down and about 17 to go, and it's all four down territory now, Tim. If you're just joining us real quick, Union led 8-0 at the halftime break, looked like it might have been an extended lead right before the half. A uh, touchdown run from Thomas was called at out of bounds at the half yard line. But the second half, it's been all Scotties. They take their first drive right down the field. Mike, uh, a 39 yard touchdown run for Braylon Thomas. Then the defense gets on the board twice. Matt Stanley with a fumble return for a touchdown about 30 yards. And then Mike Gunn, a 60 yard pick six to make it 26 nothing in favor of the Scotties. It's the speed of this defense, the speed of the players that we're talking about in Thomas and Gunn and Stanley really making big plays for this team and being able to take advantage of this jump on Canavan. And like I said, Canavan's not used to this. This is something they have not seen all season long and they're just absolutely being dominated on that front seven here by Union. And that has really been the key of this ball game. They've taken Carter away. He has not been a factor here today. Four carries for one yard unofficially. Fourth down and 17. The defense chants loud from the far side of Akershire Stadium. Canavan needs to get to the 23 of Union to extend the drive. Trips right as Olszewski drops back the pass. Throw with the middle. deflected at the line. Batted down. Turnover on downs. It's Union football. <laughs> there it is again. Four players surrounding the quarterback, and they're all getting their hands up high, knocking that one down and they get the ball back on the turnover on downs. What a huge defensive stand here. When Canavan got their deepest penetration to start a drive at the 33 yard line, it just went back from there. And it looks like it's Mitchell who's in there again. He's been in the quarterback's face all day long, a couple of sacks, a couple of hurries, and now a pass deflection at the line to boot. Minute 16 remaining, Union takes over at their own 40, leading the top-seeded Crusaders, 26-0. Another snap Thomas wasn't ready for. Somehow he's able to hold on to it, Re hesitates, now goes forward for a gain of two or three yards. That could be an issue. That is something that you've got to be concerned with when they snap the ball, when the, when the center missed 
hears the snap or misthinks of what the snap is coming. Your quarterback is always caught off guard, but he's an athlete in Thomas. He made some nice adjustments and able to take a broken play and make three yards out of it. Thomas over 100 yards on the ground now. Matt Stanley at quarterback. Second down and seven. Thomas not on the field. Matt Stanley with his brother Mark in motion to the right. He'll be the lead blocker for him. Tries to cut up the field. Not much room there. He's been stymied most of the day, but it's, again, a different look and a chance for your running back to, uh, or your quarterback, who has run the ball 22 times like a running back, to get a little breather before this important third down coming up. Yeah, and again, they really don't have to do the wrinkle now with the 28 or excuse me, the 26 point lead here. As time is winding down, four fingers in the air, fourth quarter action coming up with Union leading Bishop Canavan, 26 to nothing, back in a moment here in the Lawrence County Sportsnet, powered by LCAT. Castle Asphalt and Construction is driven to provide quality, cost efficient pavement related services to Western Pennsylvania. Every paving or construction service at Castle Asphalt begins with a thorough site inspection of the area to allow their team of professionals to become familiar with the unique conditions of your mobile business. Once the site inspection is complete, Castle Asphalt provides you with a detailed plan of the design, cost, materials, and time of completion so you know exactly what to expect during your construction. Visit castleasphalt.com to request a quote for your next project and make your dream design come to fruition. Just like going to the doctor, our homes need a checkup too. If your home is not properly weatherized, you could be at risk for symptoms that cause unhealthy ailments and higher utility bills. The Weatherization Assistance Program is the key to reducing utility costs and increasing comfort in your home. Services include an in-home energy audit to inspect your furnace and hot water tank, check for air sealing around windows and doors, and ensure adequate insulation and ventilation. Learn more at LCAP.org or call the Department of Healthy Homes to get your checkup today. In workers' compensation, my clients are oftentimes not receiving their wage loss. They're not receiving their medical expenses. In LGKG, they come to us so that we can put them in a position to pay their bills. If we're keeping our promises, our clients are getting the justice they deserve. Twelve minutes on the clock. We're about ready for the fourth quarter action from Acrisure Stadium with Union on top over Bishop Canavan, 26 to nothing, and Union with possession, Tim. They have done such a great job defensively, really limiting Canavan from any opportunity to get first downs and extend drives. It's just been an amazing performance. Two turnovers have been huge, and an offense just doing exactly what they want to do. Keep the ball on the ground with Thomas, run it with Stanley's, just use the different players that they have available, and they have been so successful here, here tonight. Third down and seven coming up with Union in possession at their own 43 yard line. Thomas in the gun, two receivers left. They're just gonna keep it on the ground. Not much room on the right side. He's stuffed immediately, maybe loses a yard even, and he's dragged back all the way to the 30. Give him a loss of one, but at this time, you know, it's a four possession game, Tim. If you if you lose yards, as long as the clock's still running, you're not too uh, concerned with it. No, uh, again, you obviously you want positive yards when you can get it. It obviously makes you a, a stronger team moving forward. But second down and long is not a bad scenario. The clock is running. You're gonna have an opportunity here to continue to do your thing. What you wanna do is just move the ball forward. If you have to punt the ball away, not to build End of the world, especially when you're playing a field position game with a fourth touchdown lead. First time they've had to punt since the first possession of the game, and it's almost blocked. Thomas able to get off a spiraling punt towards Nelson. It's going to bounce at about the 30-yard line, trickle down to about the 23, where Union will down it. Uh, Jonky doing the downing. Uh, at this point, again, four possession game, but time is the issue. 11.07 remaining. Uh, if you're Union, it's the game plan. Coach Nee talked about it uh, to us and to our friends at the Trib Live High School Sports Network. The goal is to not let anybody behind you. Keep everybody in front and extend drives, extend games, make them go to length of the field. Tim, they've done that beautifully today. They, they've done it to a perfection, and they got to continue it for the next 11 minutes, 7 seconds. They can't allow any big play, any momentum changer 
to really take effect here in the fourth quarter. Two receivers each way. Olszewski throws on the quick bubble screen to the far sideline. It's going to be dropped by the intended target. That was uh, Tajir Clayton. Uh, a couple new faces trying to get any spark they can uh, for this Canavan offense. It's just not been there today. No, it really hasn't, and that's the key here. I mean, they, like I said, this front seven has done a great job here for Union. And and this about the only we have a Union player down. Looks like a cramp. This is about the only thing that has gone wrong for Union today is a player down just cramping up, it looks like, at about the 20-yard line for the Scotties. While they tend to him, we want to give a shout-out again to our friends at the Union Volunteer Fire Department. They support all Union Scotty Athletic broadcasts here on the uh, Lawrence County Sportsnet powered by LCAP. We thank them for everything they do, and they remind you to keep checking out their Facebook page for lots of contests and giveaways. Dane Jonke able to get off the field under his own power, Tim. Give a call to Penn Ohio Bottle Water for delivery of your five or three gallon water cooler system and get a case of bottle delivered to your home or work. Call Penn Ohio Bottle Water for your home and business bottle water needs, ranging from 16.9 ounce bottles to five gallons. That is the Penn Ohio Bottle Water. Second and 10 with two receivers each way. Olszewski with the snap. It's going to be deflected and almost intercepted. Jamel Mitchell nearly did it again, and he can't believe it. He's already got one pick six on the year. L let me say this, Tim. He has been laying the foundation all night long on that defensive front. Don't let anyone just lay your foundation for your business or home. Visit DornConcrete.com for a free estimate today. He has been foundational and phenomenal today. Yeah, Mitchell's been everywhere. He has been the key ingredient getting to the quarterbacks here for Union against Canavan. So third down, Mitchell gearing up to rush again. Olszewski gets the snap. Fisher coming off the edge. It's another deflection, it's and it's another interception. I think Mitchell got his hand on it again, and it's Elijah Booker with his third defensive turnover in the playoffs. He's got two fumble recoveries, and now an interception at Akershore, the third Madur Bonner Law change of possession by the Union defense today. In the, third, in the second half. Yes, and, and it was in the first. And it, was, four. and it was Mitchell who got his hands on it on back-to-back -back passes. Yeah, it's amazing. It's this defense has been so, so sure of itself and making plays amazing, taking advantage of every opportunity. This here would be icing on the cake, only 30 yards away from the goal line. And again, I think all you care about is just hold on to the ball and take another couple of minutes off the clock as you actually have some Canavan faithful who are walking up the bleachers with their bags and with their blankets. Incredible. Thomas. Thomas will keep it to the left side. He's got some room. Goes towards the sideline and slides down inbounds. What a smart play. Uh, you can't teach that. That is just great football knowledge. McCaskill was there to force him down, but he stays in bounds, keeps the clock running. We're down under 10 minutes, 40 seconds here to play in the fourth quarter. You have the ball just outside the red zone here for the Scotties. So he might have been able to get the first down, but he doesn't care about that. He'll take seven yards and keep the clock running. Huddle up, get everything you organize, get to the line. And snap the ball with about four seconds or so left. It's going to be Matt Stanley to take the snap on second and three. He's going to run to the right side. Cuts up field real quickly as he saw an opening. Good job to plant the right foot like he was driving through the hoop. Instead, yep. he'll take a two-yard pickup. Braden Thomas was there to close that gap real quickly here for Canavan. They limit it to just a two-yard gain. That's going to mark. Yeah, yeah, they do mark it at the 21. So it is a gain of two on his 10th carry. 10 carries for 13 yards, so... Hard yards. Hard yards. He actually has a nine-yard carry in that as well. We'll see if they keep him in there on third down and one to go. No, they'll put Thomas back in. Two tight ends each way. Fisher to the left. Matt, Mark Stanley to the right. Three receivers set, and he's taking a look. He's looking straight at that play clock. Thomas knows where it is now. Now gets set with four on the clock. Three, two, snaps it at two. Hesitates, goes with a couple lead blockers to the left. Tries to get to the corner, but well read. Coming up from the safety position, there's the Penn State recruit. Jason Cross making the tackle for a three-yard loss. He's came sliding in there, Tim. Yeah, Cross not giving up on the game. Made a nice play getting into the, the backfield and bringing Thomas down. But that's all right. Again, it brings up fourth down. The clock continues to run. You have a 26-point lead. That's the key right now. We're down under nine minutes here to play. You're going to try to get this first down to continue to milk this clock. 
but you've done all right. You're, you're moving the ball forward. You're moving forward. You're wasting time. Canavan can score in a hurry, but the few, less time you give them, the easier it's going to be. Union's going to call a timeout right before the play clock expires. With 8.38 remaining, Union still leading 26 to nothing. Another Pontius Insurance timeout. Make sure you visit PontiusInsurance.com to request your quote for auto, home, business, or life insurance and get the best rates and customer service by calling a local agent at Pontius Insurance. Tim, we're going to have a fun time coming up in our uh, Tri-County Principals postgame show. We've got to come up with a play of the game award. I know. I was thinking about that. we got the player and play of the game coming up. and there's you got uh, multiple choices here. Uh, how you want to handle it. I got a couple thoughts. I'm going to keep that uh, for you and I to discuss a little bit later. But it has been a phenomenal game here. And the Scotties are on the verge of ending a title drought since 1959. Last time they were here was 1973. Last time they, well, they split the title. How about Coach Mark? Stanley, he may not have his football players or his basketball players back because he may be continuing to play for some football. I think we're going to have to make some adjustments, aren't we, to the basketball season. Fourth down, Thomas is going to throw one for a jump ball to the end zone. It's going to be intercepted in the end zone by Lachey Lax, and they're going to try to drag him out of the end zone. Paul comes loose, but he is down while in the end zone for a touchback. They were trying to go for a jump ball from Mike Gunn, but it was intercepted by Lax, and Lax is following Gunn to the sideline. He, did, he took exception to the tackle at the end of the play. He was trying to jar the ball loose and keep him in the end zone. Well, that's it, he was trying to drag him out at that point to try yeah. to get him out <laughs> to the one yard line. Lacks a good job. Oh, the ball almost did come out there, Tim. Yeah. Woo. He did a nice job. I mean, uh, they'll bring the ball out to the 20 yard line. That turnover's okay though. I mean, you're up four scores. That's the key. You, you still ran your play and gave your player an opportunity to make a play on the ball. Came up a little short on that one, but it, and it, in the same vein, you're in Canavan's head all day long. You can see it by the reaction of the players. That right now, this defense is just going to continue to do what it's done all game long. Disrupt each play, get into the backfield. Your Madura Bonner Law, change in possession with deep ties in the community. Visit a local firm at MadurBonnerLaw.com as Oshevsky drops back to pass, throws to the near sideline, jumping catch made By at the 25-yard line. Yeah, across the receiver, interestingly enough. Let's check the numbers. I'm not sure he has any receptions on the year. But there it is. Again, keep the play in front of you, and Elijah Booker makes the tackle after about a five- or six-yard reception. Jason Cross... Uh, does that's actually his 12th reception of the season 12 catches for now 181 yards again like you said keep it in front of them the clock's your 12th man even if they have a drive here if they have to use 12 13 14 plays that's not a bad thing Olszewski drops back he's able to elude the, the rush of Mitchell got him in the air and now scrambles and gets out of bounds wisely does Olszewski Mitchell uh, puts his hands on his head because he's been deflecting those quick passes all day. Good pump pick from Olszewski. Yeah, he did a great job and, and really keeping Olszewski as just a runner. He ended up picking up the first down on that run. However, you know, they're going to, again, they, only, they got 68 yards to go and they're down four score. They're looking for a big play. You got to keep, as Coach Neen mentioned, the get the the play in front of you. Keep it in front of the sticks and keep that clock running. Canavan, the first play of the second half, they got a first down, Tim. That's their first first down since there with four or 7.43 remaining in the ball game. Quick pass to the far sideline. Jonke will allow him to make the catch, but he's going nowhere. Gain of five, clock runs on the catch by Lachey Lax. And that's the key. Jonke played that perfectly. He played the receiver. Let him catch the ball, make a solid tackle, keep the clock running, force them to use timeouts. They got an injured player, so they'll stop the clock temporary to deal with the player who caught the ball. I yeah, think. I think it's Lax this time who might be cramping up. You saw Jonke earlier uh, having some trouble on the far sideline. It's a gain of five. By the way, those last two uh, completions for Koloshevsky, he had a 26-yard completion on his first pass and had misfired on his next six before those last two were completed. As we look, the final seven minutes and 30 seconds remaining here, Tim, Union with a 26-0 lead over the top-seeded Bishop Canterbury Crusaders. The winner takes on either the District 10 champion Reynolds or the District 9 champion Port Allegheny. That game kicks off tonight at 7 o'clock, and that would be in the state semifinals. 
Uh, that game tonight, by the way, is at Bradford High School. Again, in the top of the bracket, the uh, Skilton High Spire out of District 3 versus Northern Lehigh out of District 11. They uh, take battle at Steel High tomorrow at 1 o'clock. And then District 6 versus District 4, Northern Cambria versus Canton. That's at uh, Mansion Park in Altoona at 5 o'clock tomorrow. If Union holds on, you could potentially, with a couple more wins, get a rematch from the Week 0 game between Union and Canton. And that was a game that was scheduled at the 11th hour. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that uh, would be impressive. Be but still, though, 7 minutes, 15 seconds remaining Here as they the take this snap. Union from the far side. Mitchell almost got another sack. Olszewski able to get away from him, but he's not going to get away from the rest of the Scotties. Man, yeah. they are a swarming defense, and there are more white shirts in the backfield than this Crusaders line has been able to block. Mitchell has done such a phenomenal job getting into the backfield, disrupting plays. Not only did he force them back right side, he followed trail to play and helped finish that play for Union's defense. Yeah, how about that? You're right. He, he, he misfires, just like he did on the previous uh, play, but he stays with it. And give him credit for at least the half sack. I think you got to give Mark Stanley the other half. But yeah. this Union defense team, you can't say it enough. They've been phenomenal. They, this is, we've not seen this all season. No. And then <laughs> this has just been rising to the occasion. It took too long. Wow, your clock is yeah. running, Tim, and you take over 40 seconds when you're down 26 nothing. It's just not gone Canavan's way yeah. at all. They're not used to this. You know, They have not been in this situation in so long. It has just been dominant performance here by the Scotties. After the penalty, it's now third down and 19. Olszewski drops go. back, throw over the middle, man open, caught at the 35, Cross. 40 yard line. Cross off to the races, and he's gonna be dragged down at the 40 yard line across midfield for a big completion. You mentioned about Union not going over the middle much. It's the first we've really seen Canavan do that. Yeah, that's true, and Cross was made a nice play. Jockey was able to bring him down around the 40 yard line. Big reception there for Cross to keep the drive alive. But again, the 12th man is the clock. We're under six minutes here to play. First third down conversion of the second half for Canavan. Again, big time pressure coming up. Olszewski running out to his left, running out of time, dragged down from behind. Mitchell, I believe. No, no Caden Fisher Kaden this Fisher. time. Yeah. Loss about four or five. Olszewski got out of the pocket but really couldn't turn the body to try to even fire it away because he had Fisher chasing him the whole way across the field. The speed of this defense has really caught Canavan by surprise. They did not realize the speed of the linebackers and the defensive backs, and we've seen that really materialize throughout this ball game. Ganderman now with negative rushing yards after all of these sacks, Tim. And they've been forced into a one-dimensional offense. You have a 1,000-yard running back who has four carries for one yard. Blitz coming through, hit right as he was through. It was Olszewski able to get the pass off to the far sideline. And ball's loose at the far sideline, but falling back on it was Ajon Marshall who made the reception. Olszewski's taking a beating out there. Yeah, it, it's just target practice right now here for Union as they're just bull rushing everything, making that hit was want to say it was Porter yeah it was yes. yeah you could tell by you could tell by the long yeah. locks hanging out the back of his hair Porter who's <laughs> gonna he's gonna be trying to defend his esports title but right now he's laying down the destruction not on the Rocket League field but on the field here at Akershire Stadium seven seconds on the play clock as Canavan breaks the huddle they might have a trouble getting this playoff they don't even get set, and they will have to spend another Pontius Insurance timeout with 4.58 remaining, and Coach Rich Johnson on the sideline is just shocked. Yeah. I mean, that's all you can be it. You come into this game 12-1 and on the season, 7-0 in, in the WPIL you know, play, and then just bull rushing everybody, and to be completely dominating on both sides of the ball here tonight, this is something that Crusaders are not used to having. You know, you talk to different, you know, quote unquote experts uh, across the WPIL looking for this game, getting ready for it. And uh, let's be honest, if you told people that the score was 26 nothing, they'd say, wow, Canavan's only winning 26 nothing? Yeah. No, folks, Canavan is losing the top seed to the number 10 seeded Union, 26 yep. 0, with 4.58 remaining in the game. You and I discussed this last week, James, and then we kept saying the Big Seven was underrated this year <laughs> and the quality of opponents with Laurel and others that they played all season long against really got 
those teams ready for the playoffs. And we're seeing an underrated Union team that yeah. rated number 10 coming in it was probably about seven or eight seeds too low when you look at this bracket. Oh, you look at Rochester, a 14 seed. What they did, they nearly exactly. are, they're the ones who are nearly here. Two receivers each way on third down and nine. Olszewski in the gun, drops back, has another free rusher, and he's getting drilled. Is that Porter again? It is. Yeah. Brennan Porter. Yeah. He's seen the, from the left side, it was a delayed blitz. Once he's seen the opening, he went right for the quarterback and he got him down. Ocheski never had a chance to make a play. Look at this right here. Boom. No one saw it. The quarterback didn't see it until the last second. The lineman on the end, I believe it was Perez on that play, cuts inside, forces basically two to take care of him and leaves a wide open avenue for Porter. Union's found something in the film or in the course of this game, Tim, that Canavan's had no answer. And again, they're not gonna get this playoff. Three seconds, two seconds. They've, they're not even to the line yet. Another delay of game coming. Yeah, Listen to the Union crowd come alive. You think there were 60,000 people here? 10th penalty against Canavan. Four of them have been delay of games. Two of them have been false starts. Shocking what we're seeing here. Not really. We've seen this Union team play so well this season. They're showing everything here today. Fourth down. Here and then a science center to go. Almost another sack, but two Union players trip over each other. Olszewski has to throw it, and he just throws it into his bench on fourth down. Turnover on downs. Union is three minutes, 50 seconds away from their first outright WPIAL football championship. Amazing. What a performance we've seen. This defense, once it got into the fourth quarter, James wanted to preserve the potential of a shutout, and they've done it. Every time Canavan showed a little life, this defense has been able to suffocate what they've done and push them backwards. Now they get the ball again, this time in plus territory on the uh, change of possession. We have a personal foul after the thing against Canavan, and this will probably be an injection, I imagine. Yeah, somebody's being ushered off the field. Believe that is Ajon Marshall. And now, Union, you got to keep your head because you're three yep. minutes, 50 seconds away from moving on, but you don't want to have a situation like Farrell has up north where they are without their star quarterback, Kylon Wilson, for the next two games if they're able to keep winning because of an ejection late in their yeah. District 10 championship. But Marshall, there's the personal foul. You just the emotions riding high on a game where you expected to win and just being dominated. Marshall couldn't handle the situation. Now bring the ball all the way across the 35, down close to the 33 yard line to start this drive with just three minutes, 50 seconds remaining for a Union WPIAL championship. It's been a run to remember. Last week was certainly one that will always be in Scotty's lore. Today, it's the defense that's done the trick. Thomas slides and stays in bounds at the 30-yard line yet again. Hold on the far side of the field. There's a flag. This is probably going to push the game or push the ball back. But I'll tell you what, that's more plays that Union can run more clock if they accept the penalty, right? Yeah. It's a no-win situation. You really can't. You have to accept it. Oh, it's a first down here for Union because it's a personal foul at face mask against the, the Crusaders. Yeah, and on the and far now, side of the yeah, field. Wow. Yeah. Brought him down, and now you just continue to move this clock. So a run and a penalty giving the first down on a face mask that was nowhere near the play. That was an altercation on the far sideline. It looked like between... Tajir Clayton. How many timeouts does Canavan have left? Do we know? One. One. They have one remaining. Union with all three, but they don't want to stop the clock anytime no. soon. It winds at 320 remaining. They can only stop it one more time. I don't know when they're going to choose to use it when you're down to three minutes, 15 seconds left in the ball game. New player in at quarterback. I think that's Fisher. We'll check. They're going to bring Mark Stanley in motion across the formation. And it's going to be a handoff. Actually, no, it's going to be Cartwright who gets his first carry. Andrew Cartwright, who is going to get about a one-yard pickup. 
on the play and behind the play, Mitchell just got thrown down by a Canavan player. So Cartwright gets a carry. Cartwright who we'll be seeing, that's what we expected to see him uh, this past Monday, just four days ago for another Union, or I'm sorry, for another Wilmington versus Nishanik hockey match. But he uh, won't be able to put the pads on for the Wilmington co-op hockey team for quite some time because it's gonna be another week of oh, preparation. Oh, yeah. Everybody's being delayed, the basketball team, the <laughs> hockey team, but that's all right. You're, you're, you're excited for the players and the opportunity they have in front of them. And nice to be able to get Cartwright a couple of carries here. He'll take the snap, he'll go to the left side. Not a lot of room, he's upended after a short game. Actually he's gonna lose a couple of yards yeah, uh, is Cartwright. Great by Coach Need to get everybody involved who's been a part of this team the entire season. The Castle was there for the stop for the Crusaders, but you want to get everybody involved in a championship game. They've done so much during practice and leading this team here as we reach under two minutes here to play. So the Canavan, they may get the ball back, but there's not gonna be much time left and there's really no play here. Third down and long here for Union, but they're gonna keep this ball on the ground and play 40 second clock. And they actually have still with the Union roster. Cartwright wears three in blue, five in white. He gets the third straight snap, goes up the middle, gets about three or four yards back to the nine yard line. And again, stuff happening after the play ends and good job just to usher their players back to the huddle. Mason Benedict, the center is uh, amped up to say the very least. Heck yeah, this is an important thing. This is dreams. These are goals both teams have had and to get where they're at that's all that matters. But we're winding down. We'll be under a minute before Union has to snap it again. It'll be fourth down and nine. Cartwright coming back in, getting ready to take this fourth down snap. Union leading 26 nothing. Scotty Faithful coming to your feet. Five seconds on the play clock. They bring man in motion. That's Mark Stanley. Cartwright's going to try to get to the edge. He's not going to get enough for the first down. He'll be wrapped out of bounds at about the 10 yard line There's and they're going to get flag. the first down because he was pushed about three feet out of bounds. The free first down, Union is going to win their first ever outright WPIAL football championship. How about that? What a great job. It'll be victory formation. Give credit to the Scotty's defense. Throwing a shutout here today, 26 to nothing and follow the, the lead of their quarterback and Braylon Thomas, what he done all season long and what he's done today with his teammates. This is exciting. This is about victory formation coming up here for these Union Scotties. At the beginning of the season, who out there thought that this would happen? A first year coach coming in, Coach Need, you can't say it enough, Coach Need ball up. What, under the uh, Bob Palco tutelage for all these years. He brings in his system, he brings in his championship mentality. It's a post down foul, so it will be a turnover on downs. It will be Canavan okay. Ball at their own five, so no first down because of it. But how about what Coach Nee has done to bring this championship mentality from Mount Lebanon up to Lawrence County. They're about to get their first, Lawrence County, I don't believe, I should have looked this up. The last time WPIL championship came back to Lawrence County in football, Tim, I believe was 1980 for Laurel. Wow, fantastic. This is a huge moment here for the Scotties. This defense has led the way. They're just basically two plays away. They're gonna just take a knee and concede. Now they're, they're gonna, gonna turn, hand it off. They will hand it off, try to get some yards for a couple of your seniors. That's uh, Keisha McCaskill, uh -oh. and he's gonna get a huge get. run, and he'll get out of bounds at the 30 yard line. So clock will stop at the at 33 seconds remaining. Yeah, they got a big run there and that's the key now. This defense worked so hard they can't allow something fluky to happen here. They've done such a great job here today. I, I wanna see them get that goose egg on the, on the scoreboard. Tell you what, <laughs> I, I'm gonna have to go and look and see what the uh, total yards are at the end because that's a 25 yard gain. They that might, were, uh, yeah, they that might, might put them in positives finally. Yeah, I was gonna say that <laughs> might be their entire offense right there. We'll get those final numbers in our post-game show. Chesky's going to throw it near side. Going to be caught at the 30, trying to run up field. They're going to get another first down. Stanley's going to drag him down from behind at about the 45-yard line. So pick up a 15 yards. Jaden Lindsay getting that catch. Yeah, Booker was there for the end of the play there for Union. As we get down close to 23 seconds here to play. 
once they set the ball back into play here. Clock now winds, 20 seconds left, Canavan likely with one final play, and then celebration time. Scotty's got a chance for the shutout. Olszewski's gonna go, a little fake on the pass on the out route and then goes over the top. It's gonna be caught at the 40 yard line. Clock will stop at 40 seconds left on a Nelson first down, but that's gonna be it. The water is dumped on Coach Knee. First year head coach, the Union Scotties, Coach Knee Bala brings the championship mentality and brings the Coach Palco defensive juggernaut. The 10 seed Union Scotties are WPIAL champions for the first time since 1959. What a story here, not a Cinderella story. A championship story here for your Union Scotties. Union 26, Bishop Canavan 0. The 10th seed Scotties pitch a shutout on the top seed. And Cinderella moves on to the state semifinals. We'll recap it all when we return on our Tri-County Principals postgame show. It's the WPL Class 1A Championship. You're listening to it here at lcsportsnet.com. And like all playoff games in the WPL, it's on the Trip Live High School Sports Network. For 20 years, Mele Chiropractic has treated athletes of all ages to help them get safely back to the top of their game. Mele Chiropractic has three full-time doctors in their office, and all three are former area athletes who have had to battle injuries throughout their careers. They want to help you get safely back on your feet. But more importantly, help stop the injuries before they happen. Prehab before you rehab. Attention all high school student athletes. During your sports season, a $25 visit to the Mele Chiropractic office includes an adjustment and or all therapies necessary. From the athletes of tomorrow to the weekend warriors and everything in between, let Mele Chiropractic keep you in the game. For more than 120 years, people have relied on Martin Dell Hubble's preeminent rating to select their attorneys. If you've been involved in an automobile accident, you should do the same. At LGKG, we have been preeminently rated for over 40 years. When the high school season heats up, make sure you have the best gear to support your school. Head to the Red Zone on Wilmington Road in the Shannon for all your county sporting apparel needs. From sporting goods to custom apparel to embroidery and more, the Red Zone has it all. Quality gear for all eight schools in the County of Champions. Stop by and enter the Red Zone or visit them online at theredzonesports.com. Score big at the Red Zone. Union football follows in Union baseball, follows with Union basketball. It's an incredible year, 2022, a year to remember for the Union Scotties. Hoops runner up, both boys and girls making it to the state quarterfinals. Baseball WPL champions for the second straight year and now Union football for the first time since 1959 where they shared a title in a tie with Avonworth. They now are WPL champions outright for the first time in their school history. Tim, the, uh, the celebration on the sideline, we're getting some up close and personal looks uh, with our friends at Trib Live. What an incredible moment this is as they get the trophy and are celebrating an incredible, incredible game here today. What a story program today for the Union Scotties, what they were able to do. What a story. We talk about a season where they changed head coaches in the offseason. Their head coach for 25 years leaves yeah. for another job, another opportunity. And they bring in a brand new coach, first time as a head coach. But he has a lot of experience and a lot of great mentality. It took a little time for it to, to seep. But they bought into everything Coach Nee wanted her to do. And he was able to convince these players how to play and what to do to be successful. And what a great job all season long. I, I think everybody underestimated them all season. They're not going to be honest, underestimated going forward because they are WPIAL Class 1A champions. 
That's Tim Continenza. I'm James Dotson. A 26 nothing victory for the 10 seed Union over top seeded Bishop Canavan. And yeah, we went back to week zero, Tim, where they defeated Canton 31 to 18 in that game, and kind of an eyebrow raiser because Canton was a top ranked team in the state. Okay, next week they play Elwood City on a 25 game losing streak, and it's a close game. Uh, albeit Elwood is upper in classification, kind of like okay, maybe last week was a fluke. Then they just put a smack down on Cornell. They handle Shenango. They take Laurel to overtime. That's when you're starting to believe. Then they beat a perennial power in Rochester in a close game. Uh, and then all of a sudden they have a rough game at, at Southside Beaver. It's like, okay, they're back down to earth. But since then, now five straight wins, including uh, a couple of close victories in the quarters and semis against big seven opponents, Laurel and Rochester. And then a smackdown here today against Bishop Canavan, the defending champion and top seeded uh, Bishop Canavan. Uh, what more can you say? And it's amazing uh, percentage here, or what has transpired. I mean, you just got to be so impressed with this Union Scotty team and how they, they bend and don't break all season long and then just come in here and dominate the number one seed, a deserving number yep. one seed, by the way, who, like you mentioned, a defending champion, a team who uh, only had one loss all season and was undefeated in their league. It's just an amazing run that they've had. And then they come in here and do exactly what you wanted to do from the outset, from the first play of the ball game, the Union Scotties just took control of this game. Braylon Thomas on the second drive of the game for Union capped off an 11 play, 33 yard drive with a five yard touchdown run. The conversion was good, made it eight nothing. Tim, on that drive, they converted on two fourth downs on a drive that started in plus territory. How crucial are those fourth downs uh, to be able to extend that drive and, and get the first points? There weren't fourth and one and fourth and two. There were fourth and long yeah, both times. Right. And it was an amazing play uh, both times to extend it. And that's the key. You got that really, I think, bought into the belief that they had the chance to win this ball game. And they just had to follow the game plan, do what they do, play Union Scotty football and you know, Coach Lee led them the entire way that way. Braylon Thomas did a terrific job as the general on that field. And then you look on the defensive side, you know, what Mitchell brought to the game and what he did. And then the special teams, mm -hmm. the entire team earned this victory. There's so many players we could talk about. The two interceptions, yeah. the, the fumble recovery there by Matt Stanley, or the strip steal, I should say, yeah. for the touchdown and, and Gunn's touchdown on the interception. Just amazing. Braylon Thomas uh, kicked off the scoring in the second half with a 39-yard run on second down where he broke free up the middle, made it 14-0. 17 seconds later, Matt Stanley rips the ball out. The Steeler score, we'll call it, uh, go, returns about 30 yards to the house, made it 20 to nothing. At that point, Jaws went from dropped to on the floor, and then just two minutes later, Mike Gunn uh, with a third down interception return, 60 yards to the house where Pass was thrown back across the middle of the field where you say, don't throw it. The center fielder takes it and takes it to the house. Union wins 26-0, and they had two drives to him that stalled inside the 10-yard line. It actually could have been an even bigger score line. Uh, Union Scotties knock out Bishop Canavan. Again, the first championship for Lawrence County since 1980 uh, with an asterisk. We will try to double uh, check and confirm that. We're also being told it is the lowest seed ever to win a WPL championship in any classification. Definitely is for Class 1A. We, we'll have to confirm. I know uh, Central Valley made it here their first year as like a 13 seed, but I thought they won it that year. We'll get confirmation either way. If not the uh, lowest ranked team, very darn close to being the lowest ranked team ever to win a, a football championship. Needless to say, the bottom line is the Scotties are champions. Yeah. And, and that's what they deserve to be. That's what they earned here tonight or today on the field and did a terrific job all season long. They never allowed a losing streak to happen. They only lost one game and they got on a winning streak. They lost another game, they got on a winning streak. They lost a third game, they got on a winning streak and they never lost since. And that has been really the story of this team. Uh, just resiliency the entire season. Taking a look at the final stats, oh, they, they have it as uh, professional stats where you uh, don't lose yardage on the uh, sack plays. That's why they... Uh, yeah, it's probably because that's how the computer's set up. Yeah, that, that would make a lot of sense. I'm, I was like, wait a minute, there's uh, there was no rushing attempts for Koloshevsky. He was sacked about four or five times. 
Uh, that made a huge difference uh, in the game. Mark Stanley, a sack and a half. Jamel Mitchell with a sack. Caden Fisher uh, gives credit for a half a sack as well. Braylon Thomas, 112 yards rushing and a pair of touchdowns. He also threw for 80 yards uh, in the game. Uh, Koloshevsky sacked four times. Jason Cross, five times. So five sacks by that Union defense. Uh, incredible work for the Scotties who outgain on the day uh, 214 to 179 are what the numbers say uh, when you take away about the 40 or 50 yards of uh, sack yardage you're talking about 214 to about 110 uh, that seems a little bit more accurate penalties Union 3 for 17 Canavan 14 for 136 and time possession 29 minutes for Union just 18 minutes for Canavan yeah, just a dominating performance here you know, we talked about the keys being in the game and getting into the backfield, disrupting Canada from what they wanted to do offensively. And this front seven did that the entire game. They really dominated and did a terrific job and deserve a lot of credit, setting the tone. And then offensively, the general in Thomas and what he was able to achieve, you know, over 100 yards rushing, 80 yards passing, uh, really scored a touchdown at the end of the first half and just got – <laughs> all that at the one yard <coughs> yeah. line uh, inside the one. I mean, it's just an amazing, but you know, we talk about that short memory. This team had that short memory on that situation. They didn't allow a, a bad call late in the second quarter to dictate what they were going to do in the third quarter. And that's the key. You got to have that short memory in football and all sports, especially when something goes against you where you know, you probably should have been the benefit of a great play. Union 26, Canavan nothing. It's our Tri-County Principals post-game show. Union with their first OPL championship since they shared it in 1959. Tim, we have one final order of business. Well, two final orders of business. And this is going to be a tough one, sir. Uh, we have to come up with a LCAP player of the game and a Melee Chiropractic play of the game award. Um, I'd I, say, uh, so here, here's my vote. I, okay. We're going to start with the Melee play of the game. Tell me what you think about this. We got a pair of shirts. I think they got to go to the, the two defensive touchdowns to Mike Gunn and Matt that's, Stanley. That's fantastic. I agree with that. So there's your your easy one, I think. Uh, the Melee Chiropractic plays of the game going to Matt Stanley and Mike Gunn for their defensive touchdowns. They will both receive customized T-shirts courtesy of Melee Chiropractic and the Red Zone in honor of being tonight's or today's play of the game. And videos of those two plays will likely also be featured on the Triple Live High School Sports Network standout platform on Twitter and Instagram. Congratulations, Mike Gunn, Matt Stanley, your Mainly Chiropractic Play of the Game Awards. Let Mainly Chiropractic keep you in the game. Play Player of the Game, or LCAP Player of the Game Award, Tim. Obviously, Braylon Thomas, over 100 yards rushing, a pair of touchdowns. Obviously, you got to say Jamel Mitchell with well, a couple of sacks yeah, and the exactly. deflections. I figured you were thinking about him. Brennan Porter, a couple of big sacks and hits uh, down, the, down the stretch as well. I, here, here's my vote, and again, uh, I got a, a whole big staff here that can agree. I think you got to give the player of the game award to the entire Scotty's defense, That's and it starts with Jamel great. Mitchell up front. I think he'll be our honorary shirt member, but I think you got to give it to the entire Union defense for this I one. I totally agree that the defense, they were the, the stars of the game uh, with the two defensive touchdowns, getting the turnover, setting the tone, getting in the backfield, getting this, the sacks. They all deserve shirts. And uh, Mitchell led the way. So uh, congratulations to, to the Union Scotties defense for the Lawrence County Community Action Partnership is proud to present our Players of the Game Award to the Union defense as LCAP in Lawrence County Sports is proud to honor tonight's Player of the Game. That is the Union Scotties defense. And we'll receive a customized T-shirt. That is Mitchell will receive this T-shirt for us uh, as he will be the honorary captain of the defense and that t-shirt will be coming from the red zone in recognition of being tonight's player of the game to view a few lists of tonight's player of the game online visit lcsportsnet.com and click on player name congratulations again to the union defense and to mitchell leading the way as they won the wpial single a championship here tonight and it was a 26 nothing victory. Congratulations again to the Union defense. Elcat changing lives. So the semifinals of the state tournament now beginning to take shape. Union with their win will represent District 7. They'll take on either Port Allegheny out of District 9 or Reynolds out of District 10 next Friday or Saturday. December football in Lawrence County. Haven't said that in many, many years. The top half of the bracket, Steel High against Northern Lehigh. That's tomorrow at 1. 
Northern Cambria against Canton. That's going on at 5 o'clock tomorrow. We intend to have pr uh, least audio coverage for sure, though the state rights fee is very different. If uh, you're listening out there, one of the many watch parties I know we're going on throughout the course of the day, and you want a chance to be able to see your Scotties in action, it, uh, make sure you visit us at lcsportsnet.com. Get a hold of us because the rights fees are, well, they're not cheap, and uh, it becomes very difficult uh, to be able to get these games. We will make sure we will at least have an, a radio coverage game like we did today for next week. There's no question on that, but uh, if anybody out there wants to try to make a, uh, a video broadcast happen, please get a hold of us because we'd love to, to see that happen as well. There's no question about it. There's so many involved that do such a great job here at LC Sports that to make everything happen. And uh, my hat's off to our entire team all season long for what they have achieved. Uh, they're champions in my book. There's no question about that. They are. Can't give a, a, enough credit to everybody. There's already a highlight film from the first half up there, thanks to Ashley Pistachio. Uh, keeping the Twitter going all day was uh, Katie Walzer. Heather Walzer out on field with something for your wall photography. She's been giving you something for your wall all year long. Don't forget about her uh, postseason uh, and single game collages you can do as well. Great images coming from them, uh, from Tyler Aaron and Rob Nattel on the sideline. And uh, Tim, I guess we got to give these guys some credit too yeah, over they, here, I guess. They, they <laughs> helped out a little bit, didn't they, during the run? My uh, thanks to both my nephews, uh, Spencer and Logan Work. Spencer being a great spotter all season long for us, helping us get the names of the players who were involved in the play, and Logan charting plays throughout the uh, season when he's been available. So my thanks to both to uh, Spencer and Logan for everything they, uh, they've helped during the season. For the entire LC Sportsnet crew, my broadcast colleague, Tim Continenz. I hope you're not busy next week, Tim. By yeah, the way. I'll make sure I'm available. <laughs> For the entire crew, I'm James Dotson saying so long from the North Shore. History here today as the 10 seed Union Scotties victorious in the 1A championship. 26 to nothing over Bishop Canavan. Have a great night, everyone.